One word to describe competing for SFU is tradition. My word is success. Determination. Experience. Inspiring. One word to describe competing for SFU is excellence. It is family. Passion. My word is pride. Opportunity. My word is patriotic. I am Sophie Swad. I am Adam Jones. I am Peyton Smith. I am Justin Guerin. I am Victoria Saunders. I am Braden Charlton. I am Michaela Guerrero. I am Graham Miller. I am Christine Howlett. I am Adrian Vanderholm. I am Michelle Waters, and we are proud to be on Canada's NCAA team.
Is concerned. Three receivers set here. Jack's now at the Simon Frazier 48. We'll bring you the clan starting 11 in just a moment. And they're going to give it. No, they're going to go play action again and they go right back to Crevishay. And he is wheeled down by his helmet. Shy of a first down. We'll call it a pickup of six. The starting lineup on defense. Defensive end will be Karrion Testa. The nose tackle, Kyle Wilson. The DN, Brad Lyons. Linebackers are Trevor Kemp, Isaac Evans, Jacob Mosel. The safety is Gabe Lopes. He is joined by Lowry Brandon and Ben Miniker. The quarters. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's been a tough one, but uh, they are playing a lot of freshmen this year. They've got a very young team, and uh, I think there's good things to come in the future for Simon Frazier. First and goal to go behind Weber, who operates from the pistol. It is Jaquan Gardner. Jack's left to right. We're up on the hill here at Simon Frazier, Burnaby, Canada. Beautiful location. Passing Weber, and he wants the end zone, corner pocket. They try to go to Garrigan, and it's going to be interference. I believe they're going to get Jaron Bailey Bird a little too much contact on the fade. Yeah, it looks like he grabbed him there when he turned to catch the ball and threw him to the ground a bit early. So, uh, be on P.I. here. Again, Jack's marching right down the field after that opening kickoff. Good job so far. First and eight now. Well, no, they're going to move it up. That's the scoreboard after the P.I. I think they're going to put this down around the... One or two yard line, we've got a whistle here, stop. It should be noted, both teams on the far sideline, Bert. Uh, the Lumberjacks, they get the 45 to our right. The clan will get the 45 to our left. First and goal to go at the one. And Shane Torrey checks in as the H-back. Gardner, the setback. Russell Cato checks in as the tight end with a three-point stance. In motion, Crevache got to look for 32. And they're going to hand it off to 32. And guess who's going to score a touchdown unopposed? Jaquan Gardner in. Touchdown, Lumberjacks. And they strike first with 12-16 to go in the first quarter. Jacks lead 6-0. Jose Pepe Morales, PAT on the way. Yeah, Gardner right behind Kappa and Hans on that left side. Nobody touched him, JB. Into the end zone. Six points for Lumberjacks. Elterman will be doing the hold. Alterman waits. Pepe, of course, to kick. Snap there, kick on its way, and it squeezes through. Jack's lead, 7-0. We're going to pause. We're back in one minute. ESPN 97 FM. Returned by SFP wide receiver number 11, Gavin Cobb, flag down on the play. Welcome 
back for our uh, friends here on the video feed, for the radio feed. We'll be back in just a few moments, but it was an offsides on the receiving team. And the Lumberjacks come up with an interception, I believe, on the first pass as Miles Richardson threw it to the flat, and it was picked off. Lumberjacks coming up with that one, Bert. Yeah. Getting the INT was going to be Patrick Marzette in the flat. Yeah, the, the receiver seemed to fall down there. The ball wasn't stolen low, but Marzette took and made a diving catch, and the official staying right there said, good catch. And the Jacks now in perfect opportunity to get another score. They can get a first down, JB. They're outside the 10. So an interception there by Richardson. Jacks will start this drive now at their own 18. Jaquan Gardner to the right. Motion, so an interception on the first play from scrimmage for Simon Frazier, and here come the Lumberjacks. Hand off to Jaquan over the left side. He uses a stiff arm, but a nice tackle made by Brendan Lowry, Bert. Uh, you as a pioneer of the stiff arm, if you want to defeat that, you know, you just got to grab the arm and pull him down. It is, that is the best technique, you know. Don't try and get to the body. If they put that stiff arm up there, just grab hold of the forearm with both hands and just drag the person down. It's a very effective tackle, and it was a nice job stretching that one to the sidelines and not letting Gardner get the edge. For our radio listeners, our apologies. Took a little long there but uh, Jax kicked it off, it was offsides on the receiving team. And then Miles Richardson threw an INT on the very first play from scrimmage for Simon Frazier. It was a loss on the play for Gardner, so second and 12. Motion, and it's gonna be play action over the middle, looking for Chase Crevache. And Chase Crevache in the back of the end zone gets it in for six. And Humboldt State with 11-13 to go just underway here in this contest, taking a 13-0 lead. And Pepe once again looking for the extra point. And JB, uh, Crevache is getting closer and closer to breaking uh, Krieger's record. Yeah, he uh, needed about, what, 10 more catches, I think, coming to this I think one. it was that only is, seven, but we'll get well, someone from Texas. We'll get yeah. uh, Andrew Getz on that. And uh, nice to see, I know, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Crevache in the house today. Snap there, kick on its way. That's going to be a close one. Kind of a sign wider, but it's good. 14 nothing. We're back in hopefully one minute on ESPN 92.7 FM. Welcome back. Uh, quick there by the officials. It's a uh, kick return for number 11, Gavin Cobb. Lumberjacks leading Burt 14 0. The word on that drive? Yeah, JB. That drive was two plays, 14 yards after the interception. Crevache, 15 yard pass. Uh, Weber, 15 yard pass at Crevache. And of course, the first drive, the Jacks catch the folks up back home. That was a six play, 75 yard drive. Took two minutes and 44 seconds. And Gardner, one yard run for the TD. 14 0, Jacks lead in the first quarter. This drive will start at the Clan 20 yard line. Miles Richardson, the quarterback, who's already thrown a pick. Jalen Janna is the setback. He's not out there right now. They're going to come out in a five receiver set. And it's going to be Miles calling his own number. And he's quickly taken down by Chase Whitney on the stop there. Uh, going across here, Christian Phillips, the tight end, and wears number eight. The receivers are Justin Byrne, Gavin Cobb, Nathan Durkin. The tackles are Devin Pont, Lorenzo Del Gilio. Uh, in the center is Ursa. Offensive guard is Pack, and uh, number 61, Keegan Richards. Uh, they've got listed, excuse me, they do not. They've got uh, Braden Gatlin. Second and eight, two-yard pickup by Richardson, and they're going to hand it off right up the middle. Jana over the right side. 
They're actually going to go with uh, 29. That is Deontay Simon. Simon is a six-foot freshman, a California product. Comes from Tacoma, Washington. Burton, not too far from here. Nope. Well, the Jacks are now defensively, they'll be in a passing situation with third and about seven. Yeah, we'll try to get the HSU defense in here. Up front, it's going to be Jock Charles, Chase Whitney. You've got uh, Sefa and Daniel Lavallo. The linebackers, Jeff Schott, James Benedict, James Clark, Pat Marzette. The corners are Arian Nash, Davion Johnson, the free safety, Thaddeus Filia. Passing Richardson, and he's got a receiver on a quick little screen on the far side in front of the HSU bench. This one's going to be tight. I yeah. think he's going to be just shy of the first down, Burke. Yeah. And up and limping. And I will try to see. So the far side, the glare is really bad, not to make apologies for myself. Uh, but I just did not see who caught that ball. He's down and limping as he heads to the far sideline. I believe it was Durkin. Yeah, yeah. fourth and one, JB. They'll be punting. And uh, Bird's official, uh, Andrew Getz, let me know that uh, Chase came into the day six receptions shy. And uh, he's already got three and a touch. A high booming kick. Crevichet is going to go back. He's going to have a chance to return this. Takes it to the 30, then goes backwards to the 25. Gets one block and tiptoes the sideline. And boy, he was inches away to going to the house. But his momentum does take him out of bounds. And the Lumberjack offense, which has already scored its first two times out, begins operating here close to midfield. Well, I tell you, JB, Chase Crevichet is starting off with a heck of a game here. Got those receptions, got a touchdown, just made a nice return of a punt. He's off to a fast start. Looks like he went out right around the 40-yard line. Yeah, just tiptoed the sideline. He had it coming back in. Don't forget uh, Major League Baseball, Burke, game four tonight on ESPN Radio. When we are done here, we will take you to Houston, Texas. I tell you, it's been a great series so far. Oh, yeah, because we're not running for the Dodgers. <laughs> Here come the Lumberjacks led by Robbie Football. Robert Weber, HSU's all-time leading passer. He's joined in the backfield by HSU and the GNAX, all-time leading rusher, Jaquan Gardner. They're going to go to Jaquan. Jaquan's going to go right up the gut. And a nice job by that defensive front. They're going to gang tackle Jaquan, and eventually we will get a whistle. Jaquan will actually never hit the dirt. But he was swarmed by red jerseys, Burt, leading the charge there. Uh, we were given to number 71. Yeah, but not until uh, Jaquan picked up his patented five yards. Even when they hit him, just as he crossed the line of scrimmage, the scrum pile just kept moving. Excuse me, that was 74. Ray Arkega on the stop, along with multiple other Simon Frazier players. Three receivers left, one right, no tight end. Leaving the backfield is Jaquan. Weber looking to go one-on-one -on -one downtown. He wants Dylan Zuverink. And great coverage on the top side. The coverage in there by number 20. That is Adam Turner's stride for stride. One on one with Zuberink, and it will be third and four. Yeah, no, great coverage. He had him perfectly going down the sidelines. Pass was a little short, but didn't matter because the coverage was right there. But Coach Smith went for it on the second and five. Now there's third down and five yards. See what he comes up with. Jacks need to get to their own 49 to keep the drive alive. They're two for a perfect two so far. 8-10 remaining. First quarter action, Humboldt State leading 14 to nothing over Simon Frazier. They're gonna come out in a uh, quads formation. If you consider Torrey in the slot, he now comes across motion, so we'll call it trips bunch right, passing Weber, and it's gonna be a screen set up to number 32, and Jaquan has got real estate, folks. 50 check, 40 check, down the far sideline, and he is out of bounds. That was a great play made on the far side, Bert, by number three, Brendan Lowry. I thought that was six. He was getting blocked by one of the big fellas, and he was able to trip up Jaquan and get him out of bounds. However, the Jacks do move the chains. First and 10 into clan territory. I really like the way Weber set that screen up. He dropped back, kept looking downfield, looked to the right, looked everybody off, and then off to Weber on the left side there in front of the Humboldt bench. And like you said, I thought he was going all the way, but a nice defensive play to get him out of bounds. Jacks break the huddle. Coach was hoping if they could jump on the clan quick today, Jaquan would see about 10 carries. But obviously the game would dictate how much work the workhorse gets. 60 carries, nine touchdowns over his last two games. He's already in for his 10th and three games. Triple coverage for Weber. He doesn't care, and he goes. Actually, we'll call it double coverage. They wanted to force it to Crevice. Yeah. But again, there's Lowry making another nice play. Also, the uh, safety coming across and getting a hand on that as well, Bert. That is uh, Townsend. Yeah, Crevice was covered uh, double team that time, and it 
Weber really forced that one. I would take, and I'm sure he looked at that after he let go of it and said, you know, I should need to find a secondary receiver. Trying to force in the Corona connection. High school teammates at Centennial High School in Corona, California. Jackson going to come out with a trip to right look. In the slot, Creveche. H back, that's Torrey. Gardner, the featured setback, and he's going to get the football over the right side. He's going to wait for things to happen. Not a lot there. They're doing a nice job up front. We're making the stop. Number 22, Gabe Lopes, a junior. And we've got a player down, and that is a lumberjack down. And you wonder if it's 66, Jared Lyle. That, uh, well, I'll let you describe the issues he's had with his kneecap this year, Bert. Well, Jer Jared's got a bad knee, and that kneecap kind of falls out of place. And the trainer, Shannon Childs, will come in, and they'll take and get that thing and massage it, kind of get it back in. He'll go off the sideline, get it kind of stretched back out, and he'll come back in the game most of the time. But it's so painful, but he's such a tough guy. And, and again, Coach Smith, as you were just saying earlier, he would really like to take and be able to play, rest a lot of starters, get some guys that are um, bruised up right now, give them some rest, and take and get – the other kids have got to play a lot the last three weeks to get them in there and get them some playing time because the Jacks still have three big games to go. The uh, backup to Jared Lyle, number 51, Nathan Trent, the Fullerton product. And Jared's still down. He's down at about the 30. When it's all said and done, it will be third and seven when we return. Jacks are definitely not in punting territory, but if they don't pick it up, they'll have a decision to make between a field goal or going for it. When, I mean, Bert, we've been coming to beautiful Burnaby for years. This is uh, this is the five-star weather day. It is absolutely spectacular today. It's like a summer day up here, you know, and we've been up here in all kinds of weather. Okay, we were talking to Coach in the pregame, and he said, is it August? <laughs> no, this is something else. And Lyle is up, and his teammates are going to help him off the field. Crowd applause. If you've been at Terry Fox Field before, uh, the schools bounce back and forth between Swan Guard Stadium and Terry Fox Field. Uh, bleachers have been brought in to the near sidelines, and that's why you've got both teams on the far sideline. And I know myself, Bert, I prefer, not that it matters what I think, I prefer Terry Fox Field. But Coach Smith also prefers Terry Fox Field. He, of course, with the speed team, he likes the turf. Over yes, the he does. I tell you, it's beautiful. The University of Simon Fraser is located up on top of this hill, and it looks out from the stadium here where we're sitting. goes out to west towards the main Vancouver downtown area. We're actually east of downtown in Burnaby. Kelly Bates is the coach for the clan. Third season. Quads formation, third and seven for the Lumberjacks. Ball is at the 29-yard line. Passing Weber, pocket, all day to throw. Has a receiver, guess who? It's Chase Crevache. So that's number four. And Crevache now two receptions away from breaking Dustin Krieger's record for most catches as a lumberjack. And, and I tell Pretty you, good company. that is a heck of a record break. I didn't think that one would be broken for a long, long time, but it didn't take Crevache long. So Crevache two away. Oh, by the way, the Lumberjacks move the chains. They are in the red zone. If you're just joining us, the Jacks, this is their third drive. They are perfect so far today, leading 14 to nothing. Gardner to the right of Weber. Gardner has got two touchdowns in his last, uh, 10 touchdowns in his last 11 quarters. And there's Chase. Chase slips over the middle. Two men who wear red jerseys hit each other. Sidestepping is number three, 19 yards. And Chase Crevache, one reception away. And oh, by the way, touchdown number two today for number three. Yeah, as, as I was saying earlier, he's getting off to a hard, hot start. And he continues here leading the offensive charge. Three quick touchdowns for Lumberjacks. This is what Coach Smith wanted. He wants to be able to rest those starters as much as he can, get those other kids in there. And he definitely wants the quick start. The Jacks have struggled getting off to quick starts this year, uh, but it definitely helps the cause. No surprise there when you do. Here's Pepe. Kick number three. Another sidewinder, but it's good. Jacks lead 21-0. We're back in a minute. ESPN 92.7 FM. Fans, if you have your favorite team you want to hear today, download the Song Trend app. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect, it's the name of the game. For me, 
One word to describe competing for SFU is success because our program is built on a strong championship history. Every day, our team trains to win so that we can rise to the challenge of achieving more than the years before. I am Adam Jones, and I am proud to be on Canada's NCAA men's soccer team. Ward finds the goal line, so this will be the best starting position for Simon Fraser Bird. This drive will begin at their own 35. But JB, that uh, drive by Lumberjacks offense was seven plays, 61 yards, took two minutes and 27 seconds, and as a Weber pass, 19 yards to Chase Crevache, his second touchdown of the first quarter. Jacks lead 21 to zero. I should add, Pepe's field goal was good. Uh, not field goal, extra point was good. By the way, storylines, Creveche, one more catch, and he becomes Humboldt State's all-time receiver. So I guess he technically already is, Burke, tied with Dustin Krieger. But one more. He gets to look so, down at Dustin. Not <laughs> get to do that and want to say hi to Dustin. I know he's listening tonight. Probably with his son, Grayson. So uh, hello to the Kriegers. But by all means, check in. Where are you listening today? Where are you watching? Do it at Real JB Mathers on Twitter. Let us know. We'll give you a shout-out. Richardson passing quick, and he's going to go to the far sideline. And the catch is made. That's where they've had some success today, passing-wise. And they go back to the receiver. And I believe that was Durkin again, Bert, the 6'2 sophomore. British Columbia product went to John Barsby High School. Yeah, it was a quick out over there in front of the Humble State bench on the far side of the field from us. And it looks like a nice six-yard gain. Yeah, just like that, they're out to their own 41-yard line. For folks who may not know, they do play American Rule High School football here, Bert, uh, American Rules. British Columbia. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle to Simon. And not much there. Quick update, uh, Bert. I know a big game being followed today down in the greater Los Angeles area. It is 7 0, the Cougars of Azusa Pacific leading Central early. Well, that's a long ways to go, but uh, certainly uh, the Jack fans will be rooting for. Well, it's uh, funny, Sousa. I, you know, because you talk to the Lumberjack faithful. And a lot of folks, they want Central Washington to win that game because they think it helps with the playoff rankings. Coaches and players don't care. They want Central to win, and they want an opportunity to play Central November 11th for an outright conference title. Richardson operates from the pistol. Trips bunch left for the clan. Passing Richardson. Throws near side, and he's got Durkin again. Does a nice little sidestep under James Clark and for the first time at the 501 mark. Simon Frazier moves the chains. <laughs> so nice job there by Durkin. How about uh, our man Jordan Klein listening today in Las Vegas, Nevada? The uh, future Lumberjack star. Four touchdowns today in his flag football game. So shout out to our man. Clearly all coaching. Simon in the backfield operates to his left. They're going to give it to him. Off a little delay draw. Nothing there. Marzette and company, Chase Whitney, Benedicts, take your pick. Yeah, this uh, Simon Frazier offense most of the time starts four freshmen across that offensive line. So uh, it takes a long time to develop as an offensive lineman. So you know they're struggling down there learning how to block at this level. Two receivers, three receivers now to the right, side and left. Set back, Simon remains back there. And it's gonna be a little end around right up over the left side. Benedict says, I don't think so. Maybe a yard. They tossed it to 85. Ethan Basel, the 511 freshman. Nothing there, Bert. Yeah, I thought he was going to get some yardage there. It looked like he was going to cut that corner. Benedict just came up and hit him right between the shoulder pads and drove him back. Shout out to uh, Jackson and Jameson Mari, sitting in California. Well, with third and long here, JB, uh, you're going to see uh, Richardson probably drop back. And he's a good runner. He's 6'3", but he's got good speed, and he might take off if he can't find a receiver. Yeah, and if you're Jock and Sefa and Curtis Williams, I mean, you're, you're, you're pitting years back here, and you're ready to go. Four receivers set. Richardson barking out orders, and it is a whistle, Bert. We've got a full start. Now, I do want to note one thing, Bert, with both teams on the far sideline and the coach and the players obviously can't go past their own 45. The officials are gonna be lenient with the play clock. 
And also, they uh, I heard that they were going to allow, like the head coach or whoever was playing, yeah, calling the plays defensively and offensively, they could wander on the field and up or down a little bit further than they normally get to. Well, big penalty there, Bert. Uh, instead of third and about seven, you're now looking at third and 12, third and 13, somewhere in that ballpark. And Richardson and company have their work cut out. Yeah, two receivers left, two receivers right, plus the tight end. Motion now. And we've got another whistle. We've got a timeout. We're going to pause. Jackson burned a timeout. So are we. We're back in one minute on ESPN 92.7 FM. Mental illness is something anyone can suffer from. It isn't a choice or a weakness, and you can't just snap out of it. But with support, we can make each other better. Check in and care for your friends, teammates, or colleagues, and be a good listener for them. Ask them how they are doing, and if you can do anything to help. It begins the crucial first step of decreasing the stigma so that we can open up a conversation. Educate yourself about mental health and help break down the myths and stereotypes. Together, we can shape the dialogue about mental health within our community. officially passing and it's going to be Richardson again calling his own number and he's got a little room to run and Connor Cox on the stop the Arcana high product just like my counterpart here he made a stop that prevents a first down Jax looks like they're going to receive another punt here it, it makes me just want to say go Tigers go Tigers yeah, yeah. how about that and I do want to work uh, for our friends in Canada listen for the first time they know that I've been wrong on things before that game's being played at, at Central today in Ellensburg the Azusa game with Central Washington. Crevice puts his heels in on the 15, and this is a very interesting punt formation. The punter lines up in the slot and now shifts to your traditional 15 yards behind the center. Waiting on the snap. Slow, but it gets there. Kick uh, end over end. Crevice Shea thinks he's going to return this. He will. Avoids one Simon Frazier Klansman. Now he's going to the far field, and the zipper is set up. He's down the zipper, and he's got a hole. Crevice across the 50. Crevice inside move on the putter, keeps his feet. Crevice winding, weaving down to the 20. And Chase Crevice having himself a day. He is. He's on fire, JB. He made one man miss on the near side, and then he streaked all the way across. And they had that wall set up on the zipper, and he went wide away. Patrick Haggerty almost had a chance at the punter. Haggerty did a good job forcing back to the middle of the field where the cavalry was waiting, and they were able to drop. Chase, but with 1.42 to go here in the first, 21-0, Jacks have a chance to make it a four-touchdown game heading to the second. Setback's going to be Jaquan. Three receivers on the field for the Lumberjacks. They're going to go to the old workhorse, 32, goes over the right side. Jaquan sees red jerseys and is going to be, well, he might have picked up the first down. The train was dropped. Yeah, I think he got it, JB. Lowry makes the tackle, and Jaquan, I believe, moves the chains. They just drop him, well, depending on the spot. And it was very hard to see this field, but I'm going to give myself an apology there. Uh, the, between the glare and the not-so-fresh paint. Well, this time of year, the sun's pretty low. Yeah, going it's actually the at West. the 11-yard line. But it is first and 10 at the Clan 11. Motion up front, free play for Weber, throws, and it's going to be Richard Doctor just a hair shore. I believe he moves the chains. It'll be first and goal to go inside the one. I tell you, if you're a quarterback, you know you got that free play, it just kind of takes all the pressure off you. You just like throw where you want. Yeah, absolutely. And you can take a chance. You can force that baby in there. I like free dinner. That's why he with Bernard Ocean and Robert Weber, he likes free plays. And there you go. They're going to decline the penalty. And Jaquan Gardner's probably going to get an opportunity here to score for the second time today. Touchdown number 11 in 10, excuse me, nine quarters of football. He's good, folks. Weber, hard count. Guess who gets the football? 32 right up the gut, and he just powers his way through. Just waiting on the officials to make it official. Oh, yeah. 
Touchdown Lumberjacks, they lead 27-0, 46 seconds left before the end of the first. You know, that was a demonstration. People think because of his size that Jaquan Gardner is more of a scat back kind of guy. He's a power and runner, JB. If you watch him run, he can do it all. He's right. got the well, moves, people, but he can blow you away. People say he's small. He's not. He's short, but he is. He goes 205. He is built. Okay. I don't even want to say a grown man because grown men aren't built like him. He is no. built <laughs> like a pro athlete. It is up. The kick. It is through. 28-0. HSU back in one minute. ESPN 92.7. Humboldt State's open it up with 46 seconds left before the end of the first. They lead 28-0. Okay. Here's Pepe with the kickoff okay. offering. His last one out of bounds. This one is going to be mighty close again. It's up to the official. I think he's going to give him some credit and say that one went out the end zone. Yeah. Nothing. Well, that last drive started with that terrific punt return by Chase Crevice Shea that set it all up. It was a... Three play, 21 yard drive, took 56 seconds, and of course, uh, Jaquan Gardner slammed it over right up the middle, and Morales' kick was good, good JB, and we've got a 28-0 score with 45 seconds yeah. left in the first quarter. Hey, how about shout outs? Uh, already got some more. By the way, let us know where you're listening, and who's listening or watching today, as we're also on the sign of the Fraser feet. But I want to thank Dennis Hunter for checking in from good old Humboldt County. Chris checking in from Novato, and he loves the job Simon Fraser's doing with the broadcast. Lucas checking in as well, so Lucas must not have caught on the bus. Lucas, sorry, bud, you're missing a good time in Canada. Passing, Richardson fires in the flat. He's got Simon, does a nice job dancing around Connor, then he takes a big wall up from James Benedict. And that's a nice five or six yard pickup there. Yeah, Richardson's a lefty, and he likes to throw over to the, the right side, and, and that's where they've got the best yardage so far in this game today is working that uh, right side of the offense. I know Connor's uh, old man's listening. Coach Cox, Mike Cox, Mike Cox checking yeah. in. I have visions of maybe him and Ashlyn and Mrs. Cox all just sitting around the, sitting around the campfire listening to the game. Probably last play of the quarter here, second and five passing. Richardson, he's got a receiver, and no. James Clark gets a paw on it, slaps it away as they try to find it to 85. Baselt again, and Clark does a nice job swatting that down, and broadcasters drinks. This should be the final play of the quarter. Yeah. Four seconds left. The, with the incomplete pass, the, the clock stopped. Great to see Eric Tripp in the house today. He will be joining us on the broadcast at some point today. He's uh, the Tripper, one of the all-time greats, longtime offensive coordinator. Has found his way back up to Washington. Richardson's going to call his own number on third down, and he is going to pick up the first down, and he is dangerous out of the backfield. He needed five. Looks like he got seven. We're going to pause. It'll be first down for the Klan when we return on ESPN 92.7 FM. For me, one word to describe competing for SFU is family, because when you become a part of the women's soccer team, you're gaining more than just a group of teammates. These girls become your family, people that you're willing to put everything on the line for. I am Michaela Guerrero, and I'm proud to be on Canada's NCAA women's soccer team. When I first came to SFU, I thought I knew exactly what I wanted. When I got into my second semester, I suddenly wasn't so sure what I wanted to do anymore. So I started to explore a little bit. Archaeology, communications, history, even kinesiology. And then I decided to go on exchange to France for a year. 
I was an orientation leader for a year, became a community advisor in residence, helped start a choir, I even took a rowing course. After SFU, I have lots of possibilities of what I could do, but whatever I do, I know I'll be ready for it. And for Simon Frazier, out to their own 39, and it's a low snap, but it hops right to Richardson, and the lefty's gonna throw it, he wants to go up top to Basselt, and I think he came back to make that catch. Yes, he did, back shoulder. Great job, Clark had great coverage, Bert, but the old back shoulder paying off for Richardson and company. First and 10 clan, and deep into Humboldt State yeah. territory for the first time that today. Was a, that was a great athletic move by the receiver, coming back and catching that. And again, he had good coverage, but it was just took and made that uh, nice catch on that back shoulder. Tough call, I mean, tough tough catch to make, but he did it. L uh, listening down in SoCal, as folks continue to check in, at Real JB Mathers is the Twitter. Mama Bear and Papa Bear Lyell checking in, and uh, I will get you an update on your son as soon as the offense comes back out. If not, I'll reach down to the team doctor. Motion, and then it's a play action pass. Baselt again making another athletic move. Davion Johnson on the coverage, and the catch is not made. Wouldn't have mattered. He would have landed out of bounds. And it's tough for the lefty to roll to his right. Yeah, pass across his body on the throw. It's a tough, tough throw. The ball was a bit high, but again, I, he would have been out of bounds if he would have caught it. 14-19 to go here in the first half. Humboldt State leading 28 to nothing. And Burt, halftime guest joining us. Well, we're going to try to double dip here because we're going to get Eric Tripp on too. But uh, athletic director, interim athletic director, Duncan Robbins will be on and we'll get an update on the latest of the pledge drive and everything going on over the athletics with football. It's going to be a delayed option to the top side. Richardson gets decked from Curtis Williams. He then gets it off to Simon. Not much there. And it's going to bring up third down in what I is, well, I shouldn't say four down territory, Bert, because I think if you're Simon Frazier, too, if your kicker's got the range, you got to put points on the board. Oh, absolutely. Just for an optics. To use that the buzzword of late, <laughs> I optics. Know. Optically, that looks good. good. Good optics to put points on the board. I like it. Third and six. Ball's at the 28 in Humboldt State territory. It's been all jacks early. They lead in this game 28 to nothing. Yeah, Lumberjacks. Uh, Ran 18 plays for 165 yards that first quarter. Four receivers set, three to the right, one to the left, and it's going to be a pass. Richardson goes, and that ball is almost intercepted by Carno. It is intercepted. Well, they can't make up their mind. I think it did hit the deck. Connor did a great job. It was a quick out. Connor reached out, got his hands on it, and it looked like, I think that was Mars Zetbert who had scooped it, but uh, they're going to say that one hit the carpet first. And they're going to leave Richardson and company out there, Bert. Let's see, 28-yarder. This would be deep. This would be about a 45-yard kick. Wind really not. I mean, it is a spectacular day here. It's just a little Bert. little bit of a breeze once in a while. Actually, I wish it would be a little more windy to cool us off up here. i got to talk to Shannon Childs at halftime to see if I get some sunscreen. I'm, I'm, I wish I was kidding, Bert, but I think I'm going to get burnt today. What do we Whistles got? Uh, official's whistle. Was that Pig Latin? A wish official? <laughs> Say that fast five times. Pass. 13.41 to go here in the first half. Fourth and six. Needing to get to the Humboldt State 22. Baselt goes in motion. So it's now trips right. Passing. No. Richardson's going to call his own number over the left side. It's going to be close. He dives and extends. Let's see where they spot him, Bert. He's going to need a favorable spot. I think he's short. I think he's going to be first and ten Lumberjacks. So the Jacks get a stop. Well, it was close, but uh, Jacks got him short, short of that first down. So the Jacks get the ball. Should be noted, Nathan Trent comes out at the center position. So uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lyell, I will send a text down to Rob Lyell at our next break and get an update on uh, Jared. Obviously, he looked in a lot of pain, which he was. It just comes down, he's got that bad knee that he's been dealing with all year. And Isaiah Hall is your setback, not Jaquan Gardner. Pedestrian two touchdowns for Jaquan. And they're going to go to Hall over the left side, and he is going to grind forward and get dropped by number 22, Gabe Lopes. Again, just a uh, simple off tackle left side for Lumberjacks. Power play and a good first down play. Four yards. First and 10, 13 13 to go here for. The first half, Jax, well, 
they're all business, leading 28 to nothing. All again, the setback. Should be noted, Crevishay's in the slot, unguarded, one more reception, and he is HSU's all-time leading receiver. Motion up front, all sorts of bouncing around from Simon Frazier, and then Bain gets out of his stance. That's gonna be a false start. Uh, they did not cross into the neutral zone, Bert, and uh, Bain reached up to point, but guess what? That's yeah. a foul against the Lumberjacks. Yeah, Bain tried to make his case, but the officials said, nope, you were moving, son, yeah. five yards. James is a big kid, too, folks. Uh, James Bain, 6'5", 3'10". You're on the right tackle line. You're not, you're not gonna go unnoticed. No. So it's now second and 12. Hall the setback. Two receivers left, one to the right. Simon Frazier bouncing around. Weber looks like he audible, says hold on, sit tight. Waits for the ball, eight on the play clock, and he's gonna hand it off to Hall, he's gonna go right up the gut. He takes a big lick, making the stick. DeAndre Townsend, that was some good old fashioned Oklahoma football right there, and it will be third and long for HSU. Yep, Hall, I tell you, he runs hard, and he gets those shoulders square, and that was a, a great football hit right there. So third down. Jacks have not punted today, Bert. They're perfect four for four. Receivers break the huddle. Nate Trent leads the Lumberjacks to the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's third, and we will call it eight. Four receivers set. Motion, Jameer Austin. He goes to the slot. They're going to look for, guess who? Chase Crevache. Crevache over the middle. Take a bow, young man. You. Our Humboldt State's all-time leading receiver. I tip my cap to number three. I do too. Congratulations, Chase. Well earned. You've joined the ranks of the greats. Wow. How about you? So now on that offense, and he gets a nice, nice hand there from Jameer Austin. And kudos to Chase Crevache, the all-time, and Mrs. Crevache loving it, as well as she should. And if you think about Chase, a kid who joined this program, 0 and 11 his freshman year, and now the Lumberjacks playing for another championship, and now he's just going to add on to that total, coming off the screen and chase tackle for for a pickup of seven or eight. You think about his career, Bert Nordstrom, came out as a freshman, led a poor offense. The Lumberjacks, 0 and 11, didn't quit, didn't back down, moved forward, and now he will go down as one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. A competitor, never quits. And how about how about Rob Smith calling timeout? So his teammates can congratulate Chase Crevache, the all-time leading receiver in Humboldt State history. What a great moment, classy move here by Rob Smith, and kudos to Crevache. And I tell you, JB, Crevache has fought through last year some major injuries, took and had to sit out the year, and, and took and came back this year. And it's not easy to sit out a year and come back strong. And he worked hard, had two surgeries on those hips, Got himself back in shape, and he's been and he's as productive the, as he's ever. He's battling the hip again, too, Bert. I mean, yeah, it's bothering him, no question about it. But so, he's a competitor. Yeah, no, Crevache is, well, you know, you kudos to Rob Smith and the kids that he's he's brought in, and it, it's just so refreshing to see a kid like Chase. And, and talking and to some of the guys here, too, and this is going to sound hokey or cliche, but I'm not kidding. These, these core guys, they're better people than football players. Yeah, I was just going to say, Chase is the, one of the nicest guys to talk to. I really enjoy talking to him. You know, I know a lot of the stuff he does in the community, and he, you know, he doesn't post about it, he doesn't talk about it. He just He's out there helping out and, and being a great guy off the field as well. Isaiah Hall's going to get the rock over the left side, and Hall's got a little bit of real estate in front of him on what was second and one. He rips off about 10 yards in Humboldt State for the fifth time today, is in Simon Fraser territory, and you wonder if we've seen the end of number 32 today. Yeah, I, uh, I kind of thought maybe we'd see him for the first half, or if he got 100 yards or so, but uh, right now, Gardner is sitting on 20 net yards on six carries. So He's I, got the helmet on, he wants to go. And I'm, I'm sure, sure he does. You know, it's one of those things, I mean, you get a chance to work on those stats, and you know, I know he'd love to be a Harlan Hill guy and an all-league guy, but the Lumberjacks know the bigger picture is winning as a team. And Isaiah Hall coughed it up, coughed it up. The ball is on the carpet, and I believe it's gonna be Simon Frazier football. No, second down, the Jacks catch wow. a break with the extra bounce, Burt. One of the clan jumped right on it, and the ball shot out of there, and the Jacks come up with it. And with that said, guess who's back in the game? Number 32, Jaquan Gardner. <laughs> So, Holly, don't forget, no Jabbar Bird today. 
as uh, Jabbar not understanding international play, Bert. Here's the deal. If you want to travel outside the United States, you need to get yourself a passport. Yep. So Jabbar, you no. got about 360 days. When I was that Go age, all you need is a driver's license to get into Canada. Well, me too. We didn't need passports when I came up here, but uh, times are changing. All right, so it's second and long now at the 16. Blitz coming from Simon Fraser. Picked up. Robbie Football is going to unload on that football. Gets it to Malcolm Hale. Does a little dancing on the far sideline. However, he steps out of bounds. And it will be third and short for the Lumberjacks. Yeah, and that fumble, the Jacks lost about six yards. Well, it's nice they got that back. And plus another four or five, so third down and about five and a half. 9.09 to go here in the first half. It's Humboldt State 28 to nothing. As they lead over Simon Frazier. By the way, 7-7 in Ellensburg. The last update we got from that big contest going on. And Central passing pocket all day to throw, and he throws over the middle. Zuvering's got to get north to south, and he is going to do that. Spin, keeps his feet, and then takes a big wallop. But, boy, he had to work to get those final two yards. He picked those up and seven more, Bert. First and ten Lumberjacks at the Simon Frazier 23-yard line. Yeah, he caught that ball coming across the middle, and I thought he almost had it. Then he went back, made a couple moves, then went forward again and got that first down. Isaiah Hall checks back into the game. So you think about Hall, you think about Jaquan Gardner, Bert. All the carries he's had, he has fumbled twice in this career. That is absolutely amazing That's stat. That's a stat that doesn't get talked about. No. The guy is just unbelievable. Robert Weber hands it off, and there's Hall. And what do you know, he's got two <laughs> arms, forearms, everything covering that ball up. You know, when you're in running back and you make a fumble and you run the sideline, the coach doesn't have to say anything. He just looks at you in the eye and you just go, I won't fumble again, I promise. As far as empty feelings go in football, Fumbling is about number one. Yeah, it is. It's and for a quarterback, an interception is not a good feeling. But uh, but interceptions happen. Yeah, they do. But Fumbles, fumbling, no excuse for fumbling. No excuse for coughing it up. Jacks pick up three yards on first down. So this drive now at the 10. They are officially in the red zone for the fifth time today. They're a perfect four for four already. Humboldt State and their away whites operating right to left across your radio dial. Weber, play action. He's going. 4-6, gets rid of it, he's got a receiver, and he overthrows the youngster, Kalen Garrigan-Bert. He was open, and he and Robbie Football just couldn't get on the same page. Well, Robert had to throw just a little bit sooner than he wanted to. There was a rush on him there, and he was leaning back on his back foot, and he just let it go, I think, a half a second before he wanted to, and overthrew his man. You know, Robert does such a good job on those ball fakes. He, he actually reminds me of, of Brett Favre. He tucks, and he completely hey, turns his back <laughs> to the defense, which is easier said than done. And it's hard for us to see. Just think how hard it is when you're down on the field trying to pick that ball well, up. For Garrigan, it's really tough. He had to look right back in that low, high sun. Mm -hmm. Low, high sun. I don't know if that makes sense, but just trust me. It's no, bright. No, no, Passing no, no, no. Weber. Fires a bullet, and he's got a receiver. The sliding catch is not made by Malcolm Hale. I think you send Pepe on here if you're Rob Smith. It's fourth and seven. It would be a 37-yard field goal, but uh, they're going for it, Bert. No, man. I mean, the only thought really is, is you know, Morales is going to have to kick some uh, probably critical field goals before the season's over, and I think practice makes perfect. He missed last week from 47. Of course, he hit the big 47-yarder against Azusa. Four receiver set. Jacks, I'm sure, looking to pass here. Weber audibles at the line of scrimmage. Waits for the football. And we've got movement. It's a free play. Well, no. Is it a false start or is it an offsides? So it looks like I'm going to cheat. I can hear the coaches next to me. It looks like uh, the nose tackle got Nathan Trent. And... Uh, Injury update, looks like Jeff Schatz Albert. He's uh, sitting in the back, still waiting on an update for uh, Jared Lyell. The good news with Lyell, he is not on the training table. So he's got that going for him. All right, Bert, it was against the defense. Well, this makes it a little easier now, JB. Fourth and a uh, couple. Fourth and two, but the old workhorse, Jaquan Gardner, not in this game. It's Isaiah Hall. Three receivers left, one to the right. They're gonna go to the youngster. He's gonna come over to the left side. He's gonna have first down yardage and more. Buries his head around the seven, fights forward, eventually taken down by DeAndre Townsend. But he's going to move the chains at the five first, and goal to go at the five for Yo, Humboldt State Lumberjacks. Well, the left side of the offensive line for Humboldt State it just blew him out, and there was a penalty flag on that. I just saw an official pick one up. All right. 
penalty against the Lumberjacks, so forget everything I just said. Now fourth and long do you bring Pepe in. So it's got to be holding because it's a 10-yard penalty. I did not catch who it's against, so my apologies. Yeah, we didn't get a signal yet, but I, it has to be holding. Rob Smith wants a timeout. Uh, he's motioning for it. No, he's not going to take it, but he is going to send the kicking unit on to the field, Bert. Okay. So Simon Frazier does hold their water. Now it's going to be on Pepe to hit what uh, we're going to call it a 42-yard field goal, Bert, from the right hash. Okay. they got 10 seconds here to get it off. Not much wind, but the wind that is in Terry Fox Fields right at his back. Snap there, kick on its way. He's got plenty of leg. Does he find it? Yeah, you better believe it. Jacks lead 31 nothing. back in one minute, ESPN 92.7 FM. To me, one word to describe competing for SFU is inspiring, because every day I get to train alongside some of the best athletes from different teams. Their accomplishments push me to work hard so I can leave a legacy on my program. I'm Christine Howlett, and I'm proud to be on Canada's NCAA volleyball team. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun, no one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub with exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II college sports. 31-0 all Humble State. 6.46 to go here in the second quarter. Pepe to kick. Lowry, one of the men back deep. Also back there, Lopes. Kick. End over end, and that's going to go back to the back of the end zone, and that will be taken for a knee. This drive will start for Simon Frazier at their own 25. Great kick there by Pepe. Two straight touchbacks for him, and here it come the Humble State. And that last scoring drive by the offense, Humble State, was 12 plays, 51 yards, stalled out. Pepe Morales came in, kicked a 42-yard field goal. And here in the second quarter, Lumberjacks 31, Simon Frazier 0. Robert, I, you know, we're, we're still early in this game, but I do want to comment, and I am impressed. The Lumberjacks are doing what they're supposed to do. It's easier said than that. They're coming off very three emotional games and uh, win 2-1 and one over that mark. All of them just huge games. And then the one you're supposed to win, which is easier said than done. Richardson, low snap, he will pass. Now he's getting flushed to his left, and he sees a swarm of white jerseys leading the charge. Number seven, Curtis Williams with the takedown, and that's a sack for the Lumberjacks. Well, as Coach Smith was telling us, when you come into a game like this, you never know that it's a long trip, there's a lot of fatigue, that the, they've had a couple really physical games in the last few weeks, and you come into this game, are you going to play to your Lumberjack level, or are you going to play down to the opponent's level? And so far, it's been Lumberjack football, JB. Yeah, five-yard loss on the play, so it's now second and 15, ball is at the 20. Simon, the setback, three receivers right, one left, no tight end. Richardson takes the ball, throws, and he's got a receiver on the near side, and again, it's that quick little screen that they run, bubble screen to Nathaniel Durkin, 6'2", sophomore. It's now gonna be third and 10 as they get those five yards back. 31-0. We're going to double dip or to, to halftime. Duncan Robbins and Eric Tripp joining us. Really looking forward to catching up with the Tripper. Who is the, you know, he was coach's coach. He was. Rob Smith always talked about that. Coach is my coach. Does that make sense? Yeah, they worked together for so long. Yeah, of course, back to their Western Washington days. Nice to see, uh, we're doing shout outs. Richard Doctor's father, Mr. Doctor, joining us north of the border today. Passing, no, it's going to be a delayed draw to Richardson, and he's got to hustle. Gets to the corner, unfortunately, he runs out of real estate as Nash drives him out. Benedict's there as well, and it's going to be a punting situation and a chance for Chase. I think Chase may uh, get a little respite here, Bert. They're going to send back Juwan Murphy, I believe, is going to get an opportunity to return this kick. His first punt return of the season. Murphy, 5'9", sophomore from Edison High School in Sacramento, California. Yeah, I See think if they run the uh, shift punt, they yeah. do. 
Coach, Coach Smith's going to start substituting pretty liberally. Don't forget next week, folks, uh, on the road again, Rocky Mountain High, as we'll be at Western State. That one's almost blocked. And fair catch called for by Murphy, and he hauls it around the 40. Yeah, Rocky Mountain High for us, Bert. We will be in Gunnison, Colorado. Uh, my first time ever to Gunnison. Of course, those two teams met last year, and Jaquan Gardner put on a show for the ages, going for 300-plus yards uh, in the battle of the running backs, and the Jacks won that game, and the Jacks last non-conference game of the regular season, last road game of the regular season. And then back to Arcata and the big one. Yeah, it should be noted all day games from here on out, at least in the regular season. Isaiah Hall, Weber remains the quarterback. 4.40 to go here in the second quarter. 31-0, all Lumberjacks. A little counter, they go to Hall who gashes right up the middle and eventually drops. So Nathan Trent still remains your center. The other starting five remain. So four of the five, you see Kappa, Hanson, Madden, and Bain. Yeah, the fake by Weber got the defense moving left, and Hall took and came back on that counter play in a nice hole right up the gut. And should be able to get you an update at the half on my house condition. My guess is they're just precautionally safe. Hall again, left side. He's got room to run. Hall to the 30. Hall to the 20. Knocked out of bounds by Lowry. All left side of the line there. Burt Norsham going to run a truck through that hole. Now, again, you got to look at uh, Kappa Hansen. The guys on the left there, again, they just open a huge hole. Jacks break the huddle. Ball again to the 20. Should be noted, they got bogged down last time down here. Fourth and two, had a big pickup, and it was all for naught with a holding call, and they elected to kick a 45-yard field goal for Pepe Morales. Weber takes his time, hands it off, gives it to Hall again, and another just gaping hole. The O-line for Humboldt State is wearing on the defensive front now. You saw them get some success early in this game. No longer the case, Bert. The O-line is winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. And here come the Lumberjacks. They are moving up the middle, and it is going to be Hall again. Pick up of about five, and it will be second and five goal to go. I got an, all right, the official word on Lyell from the team doctor. He is out for the rest of today. Um, well, not good. Probable MCL kneecap. So I don't know if that's a reoccurring thing. And uh, his status for the next two weeks, according to Rob Lyle, undetermined. So it's really going to just come down to whether he can move on it because you know Jared's going to play. Great tackle made by Brad Lyons. He slips through. So he won that battle at the line of scrimmage, and that's a loss over the right side. Yeah, he, he just blitzed from that uh, defensive end spot, outside the backer spot over there, and uh, made a really nice tackle. Hall remains out there. My guess is Jaquan Gardner done for the day. And I, I think that's the right play. I agree. I agree. And just as I say that, guess who's out? <laughs> Jaquan Gardner. So if you want Jaquan Gardner to play, you just keep telling J.B. Mathers to say he's done for the day. And Jaquan shifts to the right of Robert Weber. Three receivers passing Weber over the middle and try to get it to Doctor. And a beautiful, beautiful play made by number six, Ben Miniker. He was on Chaser, excuse me, Richard Doctor's hip pocket, dove across and slapped that ball right down to the carpet. Yeah, Miniker took and dove with his right arm, knocked it away as it was coming down into Chase. It was a well-thrown ball, but it was just a better defensive play. So the Clan, with fourth and five goal to go, they have their chance to get off the field for the first time here without points on the board for the Lumberjacks. 2.20 to go here in the first half. They're crowding the line of scrimmage. Motion Zuberink. Hand off Gardner comes, guess what? Left side, he's gonna have to do this himself. No, great job by Simon Frazier. Townsend, Lowry all getting there, and they are jumping for joy as well. They should, they stop the best running back in the country short, and they will have to now go 95 yards, but a great stop there for Simon yeah. Frazier. Now Simon Frazier should be proud of that defensive stop. They did a good job keeping the Jacks out of the end zone. First and 10 now for Richardson and company. And this drive actually is going to start at the three, so Juwan fell for a couple of yards to anticipate. But really no chance to get to the end zone there as well. Two well minutes, played. 12 seconds left here in the first half. First and 10, Richardson out of his own end zone. 
safety alert, and he's going to run option near side. And this could be a safety, folks. Boy, that oh. should be a safety. And the official is going to bail him out. <laughs> Simon sure looked like he went down in the end zone, but they're going to say loss of about two and a half on the slow developing option play. Yeah, it's, that's, that play is just too slow developing when you're in the end zone or in a couple yard line. But what happened there, the official said, look, his legs hit in the end zone, but the ball where it came down was just over the goal line and sits right on about the six inch line. Simon Frazier breaks the huddle on the inch line. So you cannot get a holding here. Everyone's feet is in the end zone for Simon Frazier. The hand of the center, the only thing across. Richardson, he's gonna get flushed out the back of the pocket. He's gonna throw it up for joy. And he does manage to get that across the line of scrimmage and out of bounds. So no harm, no foul. Of course, he takes a big lick by Curtis Williams, almost to the fence is where he goes down behind the end zone. Oh, he was tiptoeing along the back end line of the end zone. He did a nice job of not stepping yeah. out of bounds. That was a heck of a play to save that from a safety. And again, backed up to the inch line. 124 to go. Can the Lumberjacks get two more points before halftime? Sefa, Ostrom, Williams, they're licking their chops down there. This is what you live for. And if you're Simon Frazier, you at least obviously want to get a first down bird, but if they don't pick up some yardage here, it's going to be a very tight punt. Empty backfield. This thing uh, definitely looks like it'll be a quarterback draw. No, they're going to throw. They're going to come to the near side, and that ball is thrown out of bounds. Wanting number 15, Justin Burren. And, boy, tight kick now. The punter is going to have 10 yards to operate with. Bert. The Jacks, they can pin their ears back again and come after they it. They sure can come after it, and we'll see who's going back for the safety because you're going to have a chance to return this, I think. Update from Ellensburg, 7 to play in the second quarter, 10-7 the Cougars of Azusa Pacific. All right, so here is Haggerty. Heels just in front of the end line. And he cannot touch that end line with his foot, or the officials will call it dead. There's the ball going. See. See if he can get it off. Jacks are coming after it, and he takes a knee. Wow, Bert. Safety. Whoa. So interesting call there. They concede the two points. Don't want to take a chance of kicking it to Murphy or possibly, I don't know, we're turning it over for a touchdown. Haggerty takes a knee, and the Lumberjacks do get two more points. They're gonna get the ball back, Bert, and when you operate as quickly as the Lumberjacks do, they could go for 40 before half. They certainly could. I, I you know, I'm not the coach or anything. I don't quite know the rationale behind that call because basically, you kick it and you get decent coverage, you're gonna be in the same spot, pretty much. You're not gaining that much by taking the safety and kicking it from the 20. 33 to nothing. One minute, 16 seconds left before halftime. We're going to double dip. Duncan Robbins is going to join us. Eric Tripp is going to join us. Bird Norton is going to have the quickest halftime stats. But it will be quick and accurate, JB. Yes, the question is, will it be 33 or 40? All right, the Jacks are going to take a crack at this, Bird. Back deep, it's a free kick, and number 32, Jaquan Gardner, operates around his own 20. Haggerty to kick, this is the first kickoff, excuse me, second kickoff of the game, the first uh, free kick, and he likes to kick it off the tee, not punt it. So Haggerty steps up, and he's gonna let it rip. Guess who's gonna get it? Here comes Jaquan at the 20. Garner on his horse and moving. Garner to the near side. Jaquan across the 50, eventually out of bounds across midfield. Matt Duda gets the stop, and the Jacks will operate on a very short field with one minute, eight seconds. I'm not the coach, Bert, but I'm going to put Robbie Football and Company in there, try to get six more, and then call it a day at the half. Well, we'll see what Coach Smith does, whether he kills the clock or uh, tries and sticks another one in before the end of the half. Weber is your quarterback. Hall the setback. Chase Crevache. Lines up, I believe, in the slot. He may not be actually, but he may be done. I think that's Zuverink. The glare is really bad here, so I'm going to excuse myself on that one. Nonetheless, it's a four receiver set. Weber from the pistol. Hall leaves the backfield. Weber's going to pass in the pocket. Oh. He's going to take a big shot. Weber gets smoked by number 90, Kyle Wilson. And Weber gets up and he's going to take inventory. Somebody missed a block. Clock's still running. Jack's going no huddle. Hurry up offense. 
Weber barks out orders. Jacks have just the one timeout remaining. Excuse me, they have two. After steps and comes out of bounds on the near side. I tell you, that last play, you, know, you don't like your quarterback taking a hit like that. That was a hard hit, JB. Oh, he got he, That's about the hardest I've seen Robert get a hit this year. Now, in years past, he's taken some hard hits because he, he goes all running back out there, and I think he's learned. There was an Azusa game, I think it was last year, he took a massive shot that uh, took its toll. 35 seconds to go, third and two, passing Weber, double clutches. He wants the end zone, wide open! Dylan Zuverink, touchdown Lumberjacks. They ran the play action. Nobody went with Zuverink. And number six scores six. P-A-T away from 40 to nothing before the half. Well, I tell you, I think there had to be a mix-up in the defensive backfield of Simon and Frazier because he was just wide open. No one around him for five yards. Weber faked the handoff, and apparently they bit. And yeah, wide open down the far sideline was Dylan Zuverink. And Zuverink will score six. And I... I'm going to make a prediction, Bert. Yes. We've seen the end of Robert Weber for the rest of today. I would agree with that. So here is Pepe on to add the PAT. Snap there. Kick, plenty of leg. 40, nothing. All HSU on ESPN 92.7 FM. All Lumberjacks, 26 seconds left before halftime, and they're cruising 40 to nothing. And Pepe gets into another kick, and it's going to be another touchback. And with 26 seconds left before halftime, Simon Frazier will come out, and I imagine Burt uh, run the ball once, maybe twice, and get to the half. Well, they might take a shot, uh, touch pass down the sideline or something, see if they can pick up a P.I., or not P.I., but interference call or something like that. P.I., Nice yeah. interference, that works. You got, you know your acronyms. J.B. Mathers with Bert Norshaw. All Lumberjacks cruising in this one. Thank you everyone listening, watching. We definitely want to thank the staff here and everyone at Simon Fraser for the Hall of Famer night. Join you on the airways. And it's a play action, Richardson throws, and this could be a big hit, ouch. So they ran kind of a tight little screen and number 80, Christian Phillips, just got decked. Just smoked Bert, as he was thrown right into one of the Lumberjack defenders. You know, I, and I, I believe making the big hit for Humboldt State was Edwin Campbell, and he's still down, Bert. And hopefully, it's just the wind knocked out of yeah, him. Yeah, I was gonna say the way he got hit up high and just fell on his back there, that the wind came out of him because I mean, as we've talked before, it's the worst feeling in the world when that air just goes poosh out yeah, of you. And you can't. You're just sitting there. You trying. gotta ask your quarterback when you get back. Please don't throw that. Please don't <laughs> throw that football. And, and, of course, Richardson was under heavy pressure, and he had to get away in a hurry. But that's why uh, guys, uh, a lot of guys don't like going over the middle. No. I mean, guys like me, we had to because I wasn't good enough or fast enough to go to the good parts of the well, field. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to hang out with the other guys who were more concerned about stopping running backs and getting quarterbacks, and every time they forget about me. Well, not every time. But I tell you. Once in a while. The Dustin Kriegers and Chase Crevaches, they caught plenty of balls over the middle. Well, those guys caught them everywhere. They did. And yeah, between the two of them, nobody's caught more footballs at Humboldt State. But the new leader today atop the <laughs> all-time leading receiver in Humboldt State. And this, this is too bad. Phillips, is uh, he's still down, Bert. So, unfortunately, I think it's more than wind knocked out of him. And he was kind of holding his low back uh, when he went down to the ground. So... Good news now is he's being helped up. 
So hopefully Phillips is going to be all right, Bert. I think unfortunately for Phillips, he's kind of limping now. So. He's going to be a sore kid tomorrow. Yeah, he is. That's too bad. Rachel checking in today. She's uh, listening down in uh, Orange County, and I'm sure she's excited because uh, she is, uh, well, she's not Mrs. Crepeche yet, but maybe she plays her cards right. If, actually, I know Rachel. If he plays his cards right. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I think they're going to wave it off. So with the injury, okay, that's how we're going to pause, take a two-minute timeout. We are back. Duncan Robbins joins me. When we return on ESPN 92.7 FL. For me, one word to describe competing for SFU is experience, because my student-athlete journey has been filled with lessons and encounters that have allowed me to grow as an individual. All of these experiences on and off the field will help me succeed in the future. I am Justin Buren, and I am proud to be on Canada's NCAA football team. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect, it's the name of the game. For me, one word to describe competing for SFU is pride, because every year my teammates and I push each other to do more than the year before. The amount of dedication and energy we have invested has propelled us to become a rising force in the NCAA. I am Michelle Waters and I am proud to be on Canada's NCAA women's golf team. When I first came to SFU, I thought I knew exactly what I wanted. When I got into my second semester, I suddenly wasn't so sure what I wanted to do anymore. So I started to explore a little bit. Archaeology, communications, history, even kinesiology. And then I decided to go on exchange to France for a year. I was an orientation leader for a year, became a community advisor in residence, helped start a choir, I even took a rowing course. After SFU, I have lots of possibilities of what I could do, but whatever I do, I know I'll be ready for it. Hi, I'm Ben Meineker, and I'm Nathaniel Durkin, and we're with the men's football team. Today we're going to be taking the women's soccer team and testing their football skills. Let's see how they do. I can't even reach. I mean, like, a T-Rex. It's like stuck. It's like a mini dress. There goes that little Yes. Um, <laughs> How do you see in these things? With your eyes. Yeah. Oh, it smells so bad. Okay, it smells bad. We are ready. 
First off, we're gonna teach them how to catch some touchdowns. Let's go. Ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> yes, Janice! I'm not doing diamond. Right, so look for the ball, look for the ball, look for the ball. <laughs> that sucks. Right there. Look for it. Go get it, go get it. Oh. Oh. I need to redeem myself. Oh, go get it, go get yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. I got it! <laughs> so we saw how well the soccer girls could catch. Now we're gonna work on their tackling and coverage. There you go, there you go. Ready, Kate? <laughs> I'll think you're my sister, it's fine. Yeah, on your ready. <laughs> I literally popped him up. <laughs> Our helmet's just like. We'll just switch spots now. What do I do? Pick her up? Okay, she's really tall, but I can try. Are you ready? <laughs> just like that. All right, Tannis. Are you getting the ball thrown at her? Sure. Yeah. I'll swat it. All right, here we go. Yeah, oh, you got, you got her. Go get it. Go get it. Oh, oh, finish. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you better celebrate now. Watch the hit. Oh, Brett, Phil, 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 Oh god, we're defense. I don't understand any of their lingo. There you go. Is that hut? That's defensive champions right there. That's what I like to see. Carly, thanks for playing defense. So we've seen them work on their offensive and defensive skills. Now we're going to work on special teams. Let's see if they can kick some field goals. All right, who's first? I feel like this is going to be a lot different than kicking a soccer ball. There's no way I'm getting that. Yeah! One for one. That was good. Go, Claire. That's what we like to see in soccer. That was good. <laughs> don't miss, don't miss. It's not on the green. Don't miss. Ah! <laughs> good fun. You know what, Claire? We're better at soccer. That's what. That's all we need. Come on, tennis. Celebrate, so so tennis. You're gonna miss. Come on, tennis. Yeah. Oh! That was, that was oh, yeah. good. That was good. <laughs> so the girls showed us that they had some hands. They scored some touchdowns. The offense was pretty dominant. Defensively, our tackle was pretty good. We could work on our coverage though. We're gonna watch the film, we're gonna get better. Thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. And thanks for watching. SFU on three. One, two, three. SFU! SFU. Good job. Good job. <laughs>
with exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours, the home of Division II college sports. For me, one word to describe competing for SFU is family, because when you become a part of the women's soccer team, you're gaining more than just a group of teammates. These girls become your family, people that you're willing to put everything on the line for. I am Michaela Guerrero, and I'm proud to be on Canada's NCAA women's soccer team. Hi, my name is Brendan Shaw. I'm a junior on the varsity men's soccer team. Join me today and we'll take you behind the scenes for a training. Let's go. 30 for 30, man. So be ready, yeah? One, two. Yeah, good. Hold on. Ah, the chest, there it is. Oh, oh my hey! How do I look, Marshall? Hey, fight! Hey! And long! Oh, 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 oh. No! Go with it. Good. One, two with the dummy. Next week episode, keeping up with Brendan Shaw. <laughs> Does he own that starting spot? Get my own reality TV show, man. As long as me and you are on the same team, man. Uh -huh. Score some bangers. In vain. Let's go, baby. Away! <laughs> yeah. Good Bjorn, well done! Will you win that? Yeah, Should have won that. <laughs> yep. You just tied that game, man. Mateo, catch me on Instagram at Mateo Polici at 10. I'll get you all the followers right now. At Mateo Polici. <laughs> yep. Oh! Hey, first team, bro. Uh, well done today. Um, you know, we played well yesterday and the guys who trained today was really intense, so make sure you recover and uh, we'll come in fresh next week ready for the first game. So well done. When I arrived at SFU, I was ready. Ready to pursue my dream to become a physiotherapist, which all started back in high school with my passion for athletics. But then I took a health sciences course and discovered that at SFU, you have choices, incredible choices. It opened my eyes to a world of possibilities in global health. Possibilities for my future I had never considered, but I really struggled with letting go of my first goal. And that's when I found out how much support you get here. Incredible support, so you can really explore all those choices, think them through and choose the path that's right for you. Faculty and staff paved the way for me and helped me navigate my new path, and I've never looked back. At SFU, you're part of a real community. The faculty and staff know who you are, what your interests are, and they really go out of their way for you. Research projects, conferences, international studies, co-op positions, student leadership. At SFU, you get the best education you could possibly hope for and the most support you could possibly ask for. And now that I've graduated, I'm packing my bags for Oxford to start my master's degree. Here's my plan. I see a need for better bridges between ideas and action in global healthcare. And if I can help build those bridges, that would be a really fantastic thing to do. I'm ready. And if you put your mind to it, you'll be ready too. For me, one word to describe competing for SFU is success because our program is built on a strong championship history. Every day our team trains to win so that we can rise to the challenge of achieving more than the years before.
I am Adam Jones, and I am proud to be on Canada's NCAA men's soccer team. Mental illness is something anyone can suffer from. It isn't a choice or a weakness, and you can't just snap out of it. But with support, we can make each other better. Check in and care for your friends, teammates, or colleagues, and be a good listener for them. Ask them how they are doing, and if we can do anything to help. It begins the crucial first step of decreasing the stigma so that we can open up a conversation. Educate yourself about mental health and help break down the myths and stereotypes. Together, we can shape the dialogue about mental health within our community. One word to describe competing for SFU is tradition. My word is success. Determination. Experience. Inspiring. One word to describe competing for SFU is excellence. It is family. Passion. My word is pride. Opportunity. My word is patriotic. I am Sophie Swag. I am Adam Jones. I am Peyton Smith. I am Justin Guerin. I am Victoria Saunders. I am Braden Charlton. I am Michaela Guerrero. I am Graham Miller. I am Christine Howlett. I am Adrian Vanderhelm. I am Michelle Waters, and we are proud to be on Canada's NCAA team.
J.B. Mathers, Hall of Famer, Burton Orchard. I want to thank Duncan Robbins. I want to thank Eric Tripp for joining us. And I want to thank the Lumberjacks for playing well today, Burt. We'll bring you the stats as uh, we move forward here. And the Jacks will kick this thing off as we get underway here in the second half. Yeah, the one, the one big stat, J.B., we'll just give everybody right off the bat. The Lumberjacks racked up 326 yards of 39 plays in the first half to 84 yards and 26 plays for the Klan. All right, just about ready to go here. Pepe's ready. The Lumberjacks are going to kick right to left across your radio dial. Pepe steps in this one. This one should be returnable. And it is for Lowry. It's a line drive. He picks it at the 10, takes it to the 20. And James Clark and company making the stop around the 28-yard line. And the Klan will open their first drive of the second half, operating left to right, looking for their first points. Yeah, Humble State has 16 first downs that first half, the three for Simon Frazier, Lumberjacks, had 90 yards rushing on 19 carries to Simon Frey, 23 yards on 13 carries. So here is Simon Frazier coming out. Again at the 28, led by Richardson and Company. We'll try to bring you an update from Ellensburg here in just a moment. Richardson will pass and steps up, gets some pressure, and that ball is going to fall short. As Curtis Williams got there, forcing him to get rid of the ball. Yeah, Richardson really had nowhere to throw. He just threw it away to avoid out there in the middle. Jacks had good pressure on at that time. It is halftime, 10-10 Central, all square with Azusa Pacific in Ellensburg, Washington. And I bet it's a beautiful day down there, too. Yeah, if you're just joining us, it is... Uh, well, I don't know if they have Chamber of Commerce in Canada, but for our American friends, it's a Chamber of Commerce day. I.e., it doesn't get better than it is today. I mean, this is, this is up. And the Jacks are cruising for you nothing, so our friends, Simon Fraser may not be happy, but we do appreciate the hospitality. So always, always taking care of us. Off have been running, and we are going to have a snack. Kudos to the Lumberjacks bringing the heat. And Adam Herrera will get credit with the sack, and it's going to bring up third and 12. For Simon Frazier. And looking at third down conversions the first half, Simon Frazier had two out of seven chances. Humble State was good out of five of seven. HSU defense line ready to go. Chase Whitney set ready to go. He's going to lead the charge. It's Willie Mitchell in there as well. Yeah, he and Willie get down in the three point stands, as does Lavallo, and now Curtis. Empty backfield, Richardson in the pocket. He will throw, gets rid of it, and the ball is caught, and it's going to be very close to a first down. Should be enough. Nathaniel Durkin ran the slant in traffic. Burton not only did he make the catch, kept his feet, and got enough to move the chains. Needed 12, he got 13. Yeah, and that was a terrific pass by Richardson, the quarterback. He laid it right where it had to be because there was fairly good coverage on that going across the middle, but he put it right in his arms. Ball now out to the 41-yard line. Big third down pickup there for Richardson. Richardson and company. Miles Richardson, 6'3", junior, went to Eastern Washington and Pima Junior College before finding his way to Simon Frazier. Motion, and it's going to be another pass for Richardson, and it's going to be swatted down at the line. Nate Ostrom got a big hand up there as they try to throw it out to Durkin. Yeah, big Nate didn't get a lot of penetration, but he saw the quarterback whip his arm up there, and he jumped up and blocked it. Nice job. Richardson looks to the sideline. Both teams are just joining us too. Both teams on the far sideline as they brought bleachers in. Now, Bert, we'll have to talk to some of the folks here, but my understanding is I think we're gonna do some more renovations here at uh, Terry Fox Field so it can be a permanent home for football. It's a beautiful setting up here. They just need a few more facilities looking, and they'll have it. Uh, looking back down at the British Columbia. Second and 10, three receivers left, one right. Richardson will throw. And this ball is going to be tipped and hit the carpet. Gavin Cobb, the intended receiver, the 5'10 sophomore from Victoria, B.C., went to Mount Douglas High School. And Richardson and company, Burton, are going to be looking at another big third down. Trailing 40 to nothing, just underway here, opening drive of the second half. Yeah, that last third down they converted with pass over the middle. We'll see which way Richardson this time. Bert, and I uh, really appreciate somebody dropping off uh, the uh, rendering of what will be the uh, SFU Stadium here. Uh, and it looks like, uh, you know, nice things coming here. Yes, that's beautiful. For the clan. So it's beautiful university, beautiful setting. Quads formation, motion from Cobb. It's going to be 
play action. Now rolling left is Richardson, throws it deep and off the mark with his receivers. He threw the deep ball, excuse me, the receiver, 19. John ran the deep ball, but I think Richardson was expecting the uh, stop hookup on the corner. And that's gonna be a fourth down punting situation. And Chase Crevache, who became the all-time leading passer, or receiver, excuse me, today for Humboldt State. I believe his day is done, and we're gonna see Jawan Murphy again returning the kick. Murphy waits for the offering. Haggerty kicks, a beautiful kick, high spiral, setting Murphy back. He's gonna return it, and Murphy off and running, slips away from some defenders, and he's got some room to run before he is taken down. Kami okay, well, with the stop. Well, Murphy did a nice job that time. I tell you, the glare's gotten worse here in the second half, JB. It's like you can hardly even read any of the numbers and you can't even see on the north side of the field, you can't even see the lines anymore. But Murphy made a perfect catch and went straight up the field for a nice return. The Jacks have good field position here starting. And who's gonna be a quarterback, JB? Well, I believe we're gonna see Adam Wood. But let's double check, see who Rob sends out there. It is Adam Wood, the 6'4 senior out of a DVC, Walnut Creek, California. Wood wears number 14 for the Lumberjacks, and he hands it off to 24, Isaiah Hall. Hall right up the middle, dancing through defenders. Falls forward, and that's going to be enough to move the chains. First and 10 HSU at the 12.54 mark. Well, JB, let's take a look and see how Robert Weber did since his day is over. Robert, the quarterback for Humboldt State. He Robbie football. 20 attempts, 15 completions, no interceptions, 236 yards, three touchdowns, and a long pass of 33 yards was sacked once, but not bad for just a half a play, huh? Three receivers set. Ball again, the set back. Wood, number 14, waits for the football, and he's gonna give it off to Isaiah. Isaiah's gonna have first down yardage and more over that left side, and watch out. Very close to a first down, and he is gonna be taken out. He's gone to the bench, too. I see Sam Madden and James Bain still out there. Uh, Nate Trent still out there. Russell Cadle now in as Alex Kappa looks like he's done for the game. And I'll see if AJ is your right guard. Oh, by the way, it's first and 10 at the 19. Again, hand off Isaiah Hall. Very simple what's going on here. Run right, run left. He has stopped there, not much. <laughs> Three sophomore from Enterprise High School right across the 59. Behind the line of scrimmage, and good job driving him back. Loss on the play. Jack's now outside of the red zone. What bench they have? Only so many players. All right side. Again, the pressure up front. Very nice. It's been disruptive today, making the stop in the backfield. It's now third long, and I think Adam Wood's going to have to put it up. Yeah, the left side of the defense for Simon Frazier has done a good job on those off tackles, and then when he's trying to bend it outside, they close it down. One receiver. Wood. Up by Wood. Looks over the defensive front. They appear to be coming. They are not. Wood passing. Pocket steps up. He's got a man. And Garrigan into the touchdown. Getting his first start today. It's Peter. And depth chart for receiver. Adam Wood throws the touchdown pass. Something he hasn't done since. Setties. Another international program, and the Jacks now lead 46 now. Wow, that's very, very good by Adam Wood that time, right on the Here's Pepe, looking to add the PAT. Jacks in charge on the road, poised to improve to 7-1. Don't forget next week on the road again, we go to Western State, which is in Gunnison, Colorado. Kick on the way. Kind of a sidewinder for Pepe, but guess what? Went through the uprights, it counts. 47 nothing. all lumber. ESPN 90.
he always take me? He never won it. Pepe unloads on another kick deep. Q-Stat simply asked to take a knee. And the Lumberjacks have extended the lead on their first drive of the second half, 47 and nothing. Yeah, that drive was five plays, 58 yards. And Adam Wood, backing up, backup quarterback for Robert Weber, came in and tossed a 21-yard pass to Gary Ginn. Morales' kick was good, 47-0, Jacks lead. Jacks, they're ready to go. And here comes Richardson and company. He's going to come out with an open trips right. Simon, the setback, shifts to the left of Richardson. Richardson's going to give it to the up back, and he's going to grind and fight, and that should kick out five or six yards, second and short. Well, that's one of the better running plays for the plan today. Got a nice clip of the line. Don't forget uh, Rob Smith, head football coach of the HSU Lumberjacks. Win, lose, or draw will join us in the post-game show before they uh, hop on the bus. Now, Simon Frazier does it right, bro. They charter down to Arcata. And I'm sure Rob Smith would like to get that going one day. It's going to be an end-around handoff to the big fella 19. He's going to come rumbling and stumbling, and he is going to be very close depending on the spot. That is Ryan John, the six foot seven sophomore, local product out of Vancouver. Well, he ran a long ways. He came from the far side of the field and took it out of bounds just a little bit short of the first down. Boy, it looks like. Well, it's like so it close like out to give it to him, huh? Here. The official Whoa. picks up the ball and puts it like an inch back to let him know they're short. Where's the hometown love? Better call his own number. Instead, he's going to give it to Simon, who's got to get north to south. And he does. He needed a couple inches. He got cards. First and 10, Simon Frazier. All right, good play right up the middle to pick up that first down. I still think the uh, official could have just kind of given it to him there. I think he had it. <laughs> Scott Lawson, the 5'11 senior out of Templeton High School. Do you know who coaches football at Templeton High School? I know where Templeton is, okay. just south of Paso Robos, but I don't know who the coach is there. Should I know the coach? Well, he is an HSU football legend. Probably the greatest linebacker in the history of the program. Hand off to Simon up the middle, and he's going to fight for it against five or six. Uh, that's a lot of guys that pick from. has been a lot of good linebackers. True. True. Uh, he was, he made it back to homecoming. He was there. I can see his face. I can't think of his name right Dave now. Dave Harper. Harper, yep, you're right. He was. Former Dallas Cowboy and Minnesota Viking. I know, and for my money, he's the best linebacker there. And there's been some good ones, but uh, he's the top dog. In motion again. John, right side, a little misdirection. They're going to give it off to Simon, and he's got a first down and more. Takes it up the right side into Humboldt State territory. Yeah, Harper took and, uh, was there for our alumni event on Friday, and I tell you, he looks good. He looks uh, like he can still play. 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 Yeah. As I said, that's, he's the reason Coach Smith, I don't think, has the alumni game anymore. Clock still rolling. 8.20 remaining. Two receivers left, two tight ends. Simon motions to the right of Richardson. And they're going to hand it off. No, Richardson's going to keep it himself. Kind of a run option pass there. And he decides to take it himself. Gets a couple. Second and eight. Nate Ostrom on the tackle. I didn't see any receivers out there, even though he put the ball up like he was going to pass potentially. Timing seemed to be off anyway. No Maybe game. Maybe a yard. Barely. So second down. Clan though on the move. They're across midfield into Humboldt State territory. Trying to get that goose egg off the board. Jacks have brought the backups in. Seeing if they can continue the shutout. Richardson will roll out. Throws. Has a receiver. Again, it's big number 19, John. And the lefty obviously rolling left much easier. Yeah, just a quick swing pass out there. And uh, receiver was just trying to pick up a little yardage after catch. Yeah, and now it's third and I'm going to call it seven. So it's just a couple yards. Four down territory here for Simon Frazier. Jacks waiting. And uh, good news, Bert, there will be a, a drive on episode uh, eight this week. Is, uh, much to my surprise, Quinn Murray made the trip up and uh, here videoing. So I know a lot of people have really come to love those YouTube videos that Quinn does. Nice out on the far side. That is going to be number two 
Durkan. He moves the chains, and it's going to be very close to a red zone situation for Simon Frazier. Yeah, he ran down. He ran about a 15 yard out, and Richardson just dropped the ball right down to him along the sideline. Can't ask for anything better than that. And I know you're a big YouTube guy. So you, I mean, those, those drive on things that Quinn are doing, they're, they're great. Yeah. If you haven't seen them yet, uh, fire them up. Just look up Humboldt State football on YouTube and, and go to uh, drive on. And Quinn Murray does just an outstanding job. Well, they're letting anybody call plays right now for Humboldt State. Um, it's, gotten, it's gotten crazy in the coach's booth, and it's a deep pass. That would explain why they're in the uh, red zone. As, uh, Dr. Rob Lyle making uh, house calls today. Yeah. Up in the box. Oh, no, he's got the play sheet, too. Oh, no. Well, it's official. We will be hitting our favorite local restaurant tonight, Bert the Keg. And uh, Coach, Coach always buys. So Coach uh, Coach Lyle will be buying our steak, steak tonight. Welcome, Coach Lyle. Second and 10, ball is at the 21, so just shy of the red zone as Richardson and company trying to punch it in for the first time today. Jacks waiting. With seven on the play clock, Richardson sends John in motion, and he's going to look to pass. I was going to take off running, gets away from Willie Mitchell, dives forward, picks up about five, Bert. He looked to be dead for rights, but Richardson so quick on his feet, makes something happen there, Bert. Now we're going to have third and short. Yeah, Richard rolled out there, going to his left again, and there was nobody to throw to, and he took off, made a quick decision. It was a good decision. The Jacks came up, and... Nailed him after about five. It's actually six officially at the 6.01 mark. Looks like Simon Frazier's going to come out one back, one tight end. Three receivers set. And it should be note, noted, Bert, that the uh, tight end is Phillips, who was banged up at the first half. John's going to get it on the end around. He's got a chance to get to the house, stretching it to the far sideline. Decked eventually by Ryan McKenzie, but this should move the chains. And it's goal to go for Simon Frazier. Yep, it does move the chains. That was a good play that time. Got that corner out there in front of the Humble State bench. Took it right down. I can't even tell what yard line exactly it's in, but it's getting close. Well, lucky for us, the uh, gentlemen who are running the scoreboard see better than we do. And it's first and eight on the eight yard line. All right, a chance for Simon Frazier to get that goose egg off the board. Jacks are going to have to protect these final eight yards, and they're going to do that. Bunch trips left. Ball's at the left hash. Richardson, play action. Looks to throw. He goes to the end zone. Watch out. Tipped around. And it is, I believe, caught. Tipped around between offenders, defenders. Still no word from the no, official. No, official saying hit the ground. Hit the ground. So it was not picked up by Durkin before it hit the dirt. You know, I think two humble guys tipped it, and then the Simon Fraser receiver came in and grabbed it, but the official said it just touched the ground. Yeah, Richardson's got to be careful, though, Bert. He, uh, he was playing a little three flies up right there. <laughs> he was he didn't get throwing burned. it into high-low coverage. And we have seen, you know, the one thing about these short fields, Bert, there's less real estate to come, which the DBs will always take. They don't like being down this far, but it's something to think about. Trips right with the three receivers, tight end left. Simon to the right of Richardson. Play action. Richardson rolling left, getting tracked down. Turn spins, gets away. But this, does that ball get to the line of scrimmage? That should be a foul. He is decked and down. And yeah, it seemed like it was well, short. I think we do see a flag. Alstrom got it. Yeah. It, so it's either roughing the passer or he didn't get the ball past the line of scrimmage to throw it away. You have to get, when you throw the ball away, it's got to go past the line of scrimmage. So the officials are going to have a little powwow. Still discussing. Still waiting on the white hat to give us a call. We'll see what he has to say. Eagle Ears Nordstrom will pick that up, but it's definitely going against Simon Frazier. Yeah. Sure so that's a big penalty there. It is. And there's really nothing he could do with it, though, Bert. He turned, and Ostrom was just right in his face off that naked bullet. I mean, you're hoping if he could have got it just past the line of scrimmage, he would have got away with it. But again, that's the rule, and it was clearly short of passing the line of scrimmage, so it was an easy call for the official. I was just wondering, like you said, was there a chance of a roughing the passer there because he was hit at the same time. 4.48 to go and how things have changed. What was second and eight goal to go is now third and 24, 24 to go. So not only that, but you're working your way out of field goal range now too. This would be a 41-yarder if you don't get a yardage here. Bunch trips left, one receiver alone left. 
Time out called by Richardson. We're back in a minute on ESPN 92.7 FM. For me, one word to describe competing for SFU is experience, because my student-athlete journey has been filled with lessons and encounters that have allowed me to grow as an individual. All of these experiences on and off the field will help me succeed in the future. I am Justin Buren, and I am proud to be on Canada's NCAA football team. Egg on the board. Simon Fraser trying to eliminate that goose egg. Again, it is strong. Well, trips right bunch, and they're far out almost by the hash. One receiver left. Third and 24, goal to go. Passing Richardson in the pocket, steps up, going downtown. Almost a spectacular catch made by Gavin Cobb. He leaped over the Lumberjack defender, got his hands on it, but would have been just too hard to play to make. Yeah, that was a tough one to catch. I mean, he made a great effort, but just he was having to pull it over the defender's head, and, it, and uh, the defender took the guy's arms up there and helped knock it away. Fourth down, JB. And I think they're going to send Haggerty in to try to make this 41-yard kick and get the goose egg off the board. Cobb will hold, balls at the left hash for the left-footed kicker. Eyeballs it up. 41-yard variety, zero wind on this field. Low snap, and the kick is blocked. It is blocked, and the Lumberjacks will keep that goose egg up there. And with 47-point lead, the Lumberjacks will keep that lead as uh, it was a bad snap, and then yeah. that ball never got about five feet off he the ground. He never had a chance, JB, because the snap rolled back there, and that took all the timing out of it. And it, any kind of field goal to extra point kick, it's all about you got to have that perfect time between the center and the holder putting it down. And, and, and when it gets out of timing, it's no hope. And the Jacks came in there with a good, strong rush, blocked Lumberjacks offense. will take over here what we got four minutes and 33 seconds left in the fourth, second, third quarter. Third quarter I'll get it right Marshall. eventually. Third quarter. All right, 47 nothing. Adam Wood and company. This drive begins at their own 28, right to left across your radio dial, and Isaiah Hall is going to get the ball. Hall trucks up the middle, and there's not much there. So a nice job by the Simon Frazier front. They are stout. Jax now will operate on second down. Adam Wood is last time out, but threw a seed to Garrigan, which was good for a touchdown. And I'm going to take a safe guess and say we won't see number 32, Juan Gardner. Anymore today. I said that about five times in the first half, but I think you're right this time. The fact that you said it makes it official. Okay. I don't think there's a lot of players we're not going to see this. The 3, 71, 66. Slam pass, Jameer Austin. Good coverage there by number 20, Adam Turin. Well, Adam with the quarterback. He slapped his hands. He knew he missed it. He was just a little bit wide of his receiver. Yeah, he never. It, it was good coverage regardless, though. He never gave Austin a chance. Nope. Jacks break the huddle, and Richard Doctor has lined up in the backfield. The good doctor, number 21. Passing Wood, screen set up to Doctor. He's got it, and he's going to take a big hit from Turn and bounce off him. Fights forward, and it is going to be very close. I believe he is just short. Boy, Turin brought the hammer, but Richard Doctor bounced off him and kept moving forward. It is, however, going to be fourth down. So kudos as Kyle Wilson and Scott Mackey got there to get the stop before the first down. And for the very first time today, we will see Alex Elterman, number 48, to kick and not hold. You know, Alex, he's such a good punter, but with this offense, he doesn't get much chance to punt. So Lowry back deep. He's got to look right in the sun, Tuber. And it is a bright day, if I haven't mentioned that already. Lowry will put his heels in around the 22. Elterman waiting. Simon Frazier, looks like they've got a return set up. 
Snap, there. Kick, away. Kick, it's a good one. Lowry goes backwards, lets it bounce to the 20, takes a Humboldt State bounce. It's going to be close, and it's going to get out of bounds. Bad to worse for Simon Frazier. This drive will start at their own five. Having that said, it is not the worst field position of the day. No, they started a drive actually about a one-foot line. I mean, inch line, inch line if that. If you're just joining us, folks, it is a gorgeous day in Burnaby. It is a gorgeous day to be a Lumberjacks. A little tougher for our uh, friends here at Simon Frazier who are hosting Mr. Nordstrom and I. Uh, this pretty much says it all. 47-0 Humboldt State. Yeah, and the Lumberjacks, Coach Smith, has been able to take and rest a lot of his starters here. To let them kind of get recuperated from the tough stretch they've been on here. They've had a lot of physical games in the last three weeks. Gives them a chance to heal up a little bit and get ready for the, the last couple games of the season and hopefully more. Hopefully they'll make it into the playoffs. They're still all square in Ellensburg. 10-10. Passing, Richardson out of his own end zone, gets rid of it, goes to John. John is going to be about two yards shy of a first down. Just ran a quick little hitter right over the zipper, makes the catch. Yeah, he just went down, found a little void there over the middle, and uh, turned around, the ball was right there. Bert, if you are just joining us, uh, got to give some, some love to Chase Crevache, who today became Humboldt State's all-time leading receiver. And that's something you got. You got to think about that. That's a huge deal. Oh, you think about the receivers. Who, I mean, they've been playing football for what 90 years at Humble. And he's From number the one. Pistol, it will be Richardson. They're gonna let him roll to his right, and the lefty will throw it. The catch is made. I think it's a nice catch by John. Yes. Yeah. Goes down to the four, cradles it right in front of the 25-yard line sideline, makes the catch, and that will move the chains. First and ten. Simon Frazier with two minutes to go here in the third. Not only did John make a heck of a catch going down to his knees, that would have been good even in the pros. He had both his feet still dragging in yeah, Don't forget for two feet. Motion, flipping is Simon. Handoff and a couple yards there. Yeah, somebody got him in the backfield holding on to his jersey. Burt, we have an update from Ellensburg. Central takes the opening drive right down the throat of Azusa. And 17-0, Central's taking the lead in the third. Have to see whether or not uh, Azusa can answer. Hoping they do. Of course, HSU and Central on a collision course November 11th. Azusa trying to get in the mix, though. Four receivers set, three receivers left, one to the right. Richardson operates from the gun. He will pass. Steps up. Now he swings it out to Simon. Simon out the left side. Great tackle made up top by Jawan Murphy in open space. He's going to bring up third in about four for Simon Frazier. Waiting moments here of the third. 52 seconds left. I really like the way Murphy came in there. He didn't attack the receiver too quickly. Took and knew he was going to make that catch, but he got his feet on the ground, and Murphy came up there and got in good position and wrapped him up around the knees so he went nowhere. Yeah, taking the running backs down in open territory, never easy. All right, they've emptied the backfield. Five receivers set. Richardson, though, he can definitely run. He will look to do exactly that over the left side, and it is going to use a stiff arm, and he is going to get enough. He stiff armed Nick Julier, and then took it to the outside. First and 10, Simon Frazier at their own 45 yard. Well, Richardson was the leading rusher for Simon Frazier in the uh, first half, rushing, and uh, continues to be the leading rusher. Might get one more play in before the end of the third. And I don't think we're going to. So we will. Well, no, now Richardson breaks up. I'm going to keep it right here, Bert. Okay. You got eight got seconds, seven? Six seconds to get it off. Two receivers set. Check that. Three receivers right, one left. Passing will be Richardson. Stepping up in the pocket. Final play of the half. He's looking to go deep. And it is caught by somebody. Ty's going to go to the receiver. Durkin and Murphy on the catch. But this should belong to the receiver. Yeah, first and ten. So, you know, hey, Ty goes to the it runner. Does. That's the rule. goes to the receiver. That's the rule. I mean, they both had it. Time out on the field. We're back with the fourth quarter when we return on ESPN 92.7. To me, one word to describe competing for SFU is inspiring because every day I get to train alongside some of the best athletes from different teams. Their accomplishments push me to work hard so I can leave a legacy on my program. I'm Christine Howlett, and I'm proud to be on Canada's NCAA volleyball team. 
court, to court and lane, to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub with exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II college sports. J.B. Mathers, Hall of Famer Burton Orsch from Lumberjacks, leading 47 to nothing, but for the second straight drive Hall of Famer, the Klan on the move. Yeah, they've been strong here in the second half between the 20s, but haven't been able to get it in. First and 10 after the beautiful catch by the receiver Nathaniel Durkin. Richardson rolls near side, getting heat, gets rid of it, and it is going to be a little drop down to Simon, and he's going to mosey out into the flats and he is gonna pick up about five got tackled eventually by number 13 of the lumberjacks one of our favorites the two-time tour of duty afghanistan marine lucas miller and simon fraser's into the red zone first and ten excuse me now second and four following first and ten Play action, plenty of time. Screen is set up to Phillips. The tight end is back, and he's going to move the chains. He takes a big ball. Phillips is tough. He went down hard in the first half. He's back. And uh, I'm glad I will not have his body when I wake up tomorrow morning because he's going to be in pain. Yes. I like the way they set up that uh, center screen with the tight end there, though. That was very well done. Hey, Simon Frazier, goal to go. Last time they had this, they saw it retreat to third and 24 after getting it to first and eight goal to go. And I think we have a timeout. All right, but we're going to keep it right here. I don't need to pay any more bills at the moment. I'm having dinner with Doc Lyle tonight, so uh, don't need money. But with that said, uh, commanding performance by the HSU Lumberjacks today. Um, you know, people on paper, I think, expected this. But that's easier said than done. They're coming off three emotional games at Central, home for Western Oregon. Excuse me, home for Azusa Pacific, then home for Western Oregon. They win the two home games after just that brutal stretch. And they're in a position now, still playing for a conference championship, still playing for a league title. And the games get more and more important as you win. But I think you could have had a letdown today, and I saw none of that out of Rob Smith's Lumberjacks. Oh, I agree. I, I really thought coming in we might see a letdown. But the Jacks came in here and they did their business here, particularly getting off to a fast start like they wanted to. But it's not that easy. You still got to go out there and block and tackle, JB. There's no give me's. No, I, I you got to work hard. I agree. And on the Simon Fraser side, Bert, obviously, you know, well, we don't get to see it day to day. Their struggles still continue. But, boy, you know, a new stadium, new field coming in. You live in, you know, so many of the schools that we play, being ourselves in the GNAC, small areas. The only two quote unquote big city schools, really, Azusa Pacific and Simon Fraser. Uh, I will live in a BC 100 days over zero compared to East Los Angeles and Azusa. Yeah, not, not a tough choice, is it? But, you know, you hope that with the new facilities and the commitment to the program that, uh, you know, they will continue to get stronger here north of the border. First and ten, excuse me, first and seven, goal to go. It's 47 nothing. HSU timeout was just called by Simon Frazier. The Jacks trying to remain perfect defensively. Motion, Durkin. They're going to look that direction. Now rolling, getting scrambled, and he tosses it out to Simon. What a play by Richardson, Burt. He wanted to go right. Heat coming. His feet bought him more time. He finds Simon out of the backfield, and Simon Frazier, for the first time today, has found Pater. I tell you, a lot of credit to Richardson that time. He had heavy pressure on him, like you said, and he just held on to that ball as long as he possibly could and then dished it out to the side there for the touchdown. It's going to be a P18 now for Haggerty. Trying to make it 47 to 7. The lefty will let Gavin Cobb do the holding. Waits on the snap. Cobb's ready. Snaps there. Kick on its way. It is up. Count it. 47-7 all jacks. Back in a minute. ESPN 92-7.
For me, one word to describe competing for SFU is pride, because every year my teammates and I push each other to do more than the year before. The amount of dedication and energy we have invested has propelled us to become a rising force in the NCAA. I am Michelle Waters and I am proud to be on Canada's NCAA women's golf team. For the first time today, Simon Fraser finds the end zone and this game now is a 47-7 affair. Humble State looking to kill the final 14 minutes of this game. Get some food at Bob's Burgers across the border and head back to Arcata, California. Long trip. Haggerty lets it rip, end over end. And this ball is not going to be returned. It's going to go. No. Momentum of the football, take a knee. And Rob Smith, of course, taught us that as it was bobbled by Malcolm Hale. It went backwards, but uh, with the momentum of the football, you do not need to run it out. Ma Malcolm thought about it a little bit there, but. Thought it crossed his mind. Yeah, but he got a little help saying, hey, just take the knee. All right, can Adam Wood, Isaiah Hall, Richard Doctor, and the offensive line run out the time of this game? Well, I'm sure Coach Smith would like to see the uh, running game just grind it out down the field, not do a lot of passing, try and shorten this game. Wood with Richard Doctor. A good doctor into the game. Let's get a look to pick up some yardage here. Strong trips right, and the ball is going to go to Richard. And the doctor keeps his feet, still on his feet, fighting, grinding. What looked like a four-yard pickup all of a sudden becomes a seven or eight-yard pickup. Should be noted, we have an update from Ellensburg. The score now, 17-17, all square between the Cougars and the Wildcats. Is that the third quarter, JB? Third quarter action, Hall of Famer. All right, good game, Ellensburg. In our game here in Burnaby, Canada, 47-7, all Lumberjacks. The first time today. The clan score. Doctor again up the left side. He's going to pick up the first down and more. Just kind of squirts through those big offensive linemen. And Madden's got to be careful here. Sam Madden, they're late on the whistle, so he went in to clean up a mess, and he's going to get called for a late hit. Yep, got to be careful. I was going to say, Richard Doctor, one of the unsung heroes of this football team in the sense that he took, he was a heck of a running back, but you behind Jaquan Gardner, what are you going to do? But he's a great athlete. Coaches put him at the slot, use him as a receiver. you got to get that kid the ball. No, no he's, doubt about he's it. He's a good all-around player. He, he's smart. He can play a lot of positions. And he is going to lose unsung guys. Jack's a little you know, there's a, always bickering a, going on around out there. Jameer and Sam having a laugh about it. It's all said and done. It will be HSU. For Nordstrom, please remember, cell phones always on vibrate in the press box. There are rules to being in the press box. Yes, we're killing time. I think you're the last one to use my cell phone on the interview. It's a good possibility. Yeah. 13-13 left to go here in this contest, and instead of a first down, well, it might still be a first down, but instead of the ball being at the 38, Madden's going to get dinged for the personal foul, so move the Lumberjacks back. It will be first and 10, but instead of the 48, it's the 22. Yeah, those 15-yarders hurt. Excuse me, instead of the 38, it's the 42. I tell you, Jamie, I don't want to bother you in here, but you got sunburn on your nose, your arms, you're a mess. Well, that's true, but also I have a sunburn to boot, which is, uh, I, you know, I, I didn't see this coming today. How did I know? You could have worn your golf shorts and a t-shirt. Should have. Yeah. Could have the clubs. Great golf up here in Vancouver, too. We're killing time. Here we go. First and 10 Lumberjacks after the personal foul. Ball's at their own 22, 23, somewhere in that neighborhood. Wood play action, rolls to his right, throws downtown. He's got Jameer. Couldn't get on the same page. Jameer beat the corner. It would have been six, and Wood just a little too much air underneath there. Yeah. Well, if he just put a little more air under it, lofted just a little bit more, I think he couldn't run under it, but he just overthrew him. Yeah, when you overthrow guys like Jameer, it's, it's, it's not because Jameer wasn't on his horse. Yeah. He was going as fast as he could go. Jameer's just now getting back to the line of scrimmage. So everyone got to enjoy a huddle except for Jameer. And I don't know, someone's coming in new at receiver. For the first time, it is number 10. That is going to be Andrew Teenstead, I believe. 
Hard count for Wood. And Wood takes the football. He's passing again in the pocket, steps up, rolls, throws, and incomplete. That ball really not a, never had a chance, yeah. and I don't think he wanted to do that. Or excuse me, didn't want to try to complete it because there were red jerseys everywhere. Yeah. Adam saw the uh, defender coming over the backside there, and he threw it down in the ground, kind of short-armed it down in the ground so it could not be intercepted, but I don't think he was really trying to make a reception there. All right, third and ten, just like that. We may see Alex Elterman for the second time today. The Lumberjacks cannot move the chains. They were doing a good job running the ball. You have the personal foul. They've gone to the air with Wood, and suddenly things have slowed down a little bit offensively. Wood barking out orders. Doctor shifts from right to left. Passing Wood, pocket steps up, lets it rip. Scott Jameer caught. Does he hold on? He took a big hit. Big hit from Turin and Duda. But Jameer holds on doing the dirty work over the middle. Out to the 42. First and 10 Lumberjacks. Hey, that offensive line gave Adam Wood all the time he needed because that was a long pattern, JB. He went down and then crossed the middle, and it was a strike from Woods. And first down, Lumberjacks. And Jameer has earned himself a little breather. Wood with three receivers left, one to the right. Waits for the football, hands it off to Richard, and he is not going to get away from two defenders. Guess who? Number 90, Kyle Wilson. He's been a force up front. He has. He's done a great job up front. we got a Lumberjack slow getting up down there. Can't get the number. Can you see it? Sam. It's, uh, Sam? No, it's no. James Bain, I believe. And he lost his shoe on top of that. I think that's what it is. I think he lost his shoe. And he's going out. And, all right, uh, Jinx again. Another Jinx. Guess who's coming back into this game? Really? Alex Kappa steps in in relief as Bain goes to get his shoe fixed. I don't, honestly, I think all the gear he's got on, he can't tie his shoes where it's just going to have. Chris Kelly take care of that for him. Alex Kappa lines up at left tackle. He's done that a few times. The future NFLer will get a respite. Timeout on the field. We're going to be back in one minute. ESPN 92.7 FM. For me, one word to describe competing for SFU is family. Because when you become a part of the women's soccer team, you're gaining more than just a group of teammates. These girls become your family, people that you're willing to put everything on the line for. I am Michaela Guerrero, and I'm proud to be on Canada's NCAA women's soccer team. When I first came to SFU, I thought I knew exactly what I wanted. When I got into my second semester, I suddenly wasn't so sure what I wanted to do anymore. So I started to explore a little bit. Archaeology, communications, history, even kinesiology. And then I decided to go on exchange to France for a year. I was an orientation leader for a year, became a community advisor in residence, helped start a choir, I even took a rowing course. After SFU, I have lots of possibilities of what I could do, but whatever I do, I know I'll be ready for it. Food recommendations pouring in left and right. Jack's trying to keep this thing rolling here, 11-22. 47-7, Lumberjacks lead. Timeout was called by HSU, should be noted. Alex Kappa has left the building. And the future NFLer back on the bench. I don't think Rob Smith won a cap in this game. No. You, what's Say, those can guys somebody arrest? please get yeah. James a shoe? Don't need my future NFL left tackler getting hurt as he takes a breather. And it's going to be Joey Sweeney who's checked in. And Sweeney, I think, wanted to pass out to the left, and that was covered well. He's going to get sacked by number 40, Isaac Evans, 6'3", freshman from Terry Fox High School. I tell you, that was a smart move by Sweeney not to even attempt that pass. It could have got picked for six. So Sweeney, 6'3", redshirt freshman, went to Freedom High School in Oakley, California. Valley life. He's a big kid. He's not skinny or anything. He's a big quarterback. He likes truck stops and three passes. I bet he does. Three receivers left, one to the right, third and 12. Hard count for Sweeney. Some movement up front, but the clan hold their water. Sweeney will pass. Pocket looks pretty good. He steps up. Now he's getting flushed. Rolls to his right. Clutches. Now he's going to take off running. And Sweeney <laughs> upended just shy of the first down. Lumbering, bumbling. And it'll be interesting here if you're Rob Smith. Do you go for it? Not much to gain at midfield. You're up 47-7. These guys are working hard. They want another crack at it. They're going to place this ball, I think, about two yards shy. And Coach Smith is going to let Alex Elderman kick again. 
Yeah, I think that's a smart thing to do. Last time he put it out inside the five yard line, see if we can do it again. But we're gonna check in again in Ellensburg to get an update. Last time we were there, it was 17 all between Azusa Pacific and Central Washington. And we have a new update in the third. Central Washington has retaken the lead by a score of 20 to 17. Not a game you want to be kicking field goals. No, and I tell you, a real back and forth game. Seems like each time Central goes down and gets a score, Seuss has been able to answer. So they see to keep it up. Brandon Lowry back deep. Kicking Alex Elterman. Lowry, heels dug in at the 10. Snap is on money. High spiral. Beautiful kick. Lowry calls for a fair catch, juggles it, and when it's all said and done, holds on to the pigskin. First and 10 and a chance here, Burt, with 9.46 to go. Simon Frazier, if they can peel off another touchdown drive or two, they're going to feel really good about the way this game finished for them offensively, and they're getting stops on defense. Yeah, no, they, they did a good job the last couple times they've had the ball moving it down the field. And, of course, the Lumberjacks would like to have another shot, too, get their uh, some of the guys more playing time on that offensive unit. 9.46 to play here, 47-7. to 7. Again, next week we'll be on the road, us being the uh, Lumberjacks. As I do want to say again, thank you to uh, everyone here at Simon Fraser to let us uh, call the action on their broadcast. But uh, for the HSU radio team, Bert Norris from J.B. Mathers, we will be on the road in Gunnison, Colorado. Passing, and it's going to go deep to, I believe that was John. He took a big hit, Bert. And the ball was dislodged. That was actually not John. That was Justin Burren, the 6'1 senior. And he took a big lick. I think Herrera got him. Yeah, it was a good pass. Burn actually caught it, but on the first step, he hit the big lick, and he just took and popped out. And yeah, that was Adam Herrera on the stop. 9.40 to go. Talvi doing a great job running our program back in our studios in Eureka, California. International broadcast today. From the pistol, Richardson hands it off Simon. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Quickly taken down. I believe for Humboldt State. All sorts of new names we get to say. I know. Paper, but that's Brock Funk, the linebacker, the redshirt freshman out of Novato, California, Marin County. That's a name you haven't called before. It's a new one. It's a beauty for these games. Let's call some new names. He's down there with Willie Mitchell and company. Nate Ostrom. Third and, I'm going to call it 11, Bert, for Richardson. He will pass in the pocket, sets, gets rid of it, throws, and that is a nice pitch and catch. Again, it's Justin Burren runs the deep slant, first and 10, Simon Frazier at the 856 mark. Yeah, and the offensive line for Simon Frazier gave the quarterback Richardson nice time to so he could allow that uh, receiver to run his pattern, and it was right there on the money, first down. So, Simon Frazier coming up the line of scrimmage, and uh, they got, oh, white outs on each side, four out. Yeah, we're going to call it a quad set, Burt, even across the front, looking to pass off the play action. Richardson, and that ball is swatted down by Big Willie Mitchell, and Brock Funk will be second and 10 with 8.30 to go in the contest. So, yeah, the Lumberjacks, they will, they will get their showers in, hop in the bus, head down, cross, hope, Hope the broader crossing goes quickly, yeah. he was hope for. Right. Rob said it went smooth coming through. He's so funny. He says, well, I'm always the first one to go through, and then I kind of turn around and look, and I'm always curious to see how it's going to go. But he said it went very smooth coming in. And it's going to be another pass for Richardson. Rolls to the near side. He's going to take off running, and he's got a little real estate in front of him. Nick Julier is going to drag him down. Julier drags him down by the jersey. He's going to come up short. And it will be third down. You know, JB, it's going to be a short week of practice for Lumberjacks. Go get back late. Going to get back. And then you got to leave again on Thursday. Yeah, and they will uh, drive down to, I'm not sure if they're out of Sacramento or Oakland, but they will fly to Denver. And then from Denver. Well, now, Pat Walsh is listening. Pat, talk to Uncle John and see if you can make it happen so the Jacks can practice at Bronco headquarters. And it's going to be an end around. Jet sweep, some people like to call it, as John takes it, hurdles. I mean, when you're 6'7 and you're hurdling, you look like Edwin Moses and he moves the chains. Well, he is a tall drip of water. Wow. 
Well, jet sweep, another first down. They're moving the ball again, Yeah, they're Jamie. moving the ball on a chance here to go back-to-back -back touchdowns for Richardson and company, and methodically they are moving this football. Punt, or excuse me, a field goal blocked, and then they scored their last time out. So they're having success here late running the ball, or running the offense, I should say. Stepping up, throwing, and it's going to be a pass to Durkin. Durkin goes the wrong direction, though, so he's only going to pick up a few. Yeah, if Durkin just would have taken one step and fallen forward, he would have doubled his yardage. Second and eight, he only picks up two. It looked like a much more promising play beforehand. Clock winds. <laughs> Richardson and company still taking their time. Game's clearly out of hand at 47 to seven. So you just want to put together a nice quality drive. And obviously you got a lot of young players on this Simon Fraser team, but so you are building for the future in moments like this. Two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. And it's gonna be, boy, I don't know. That's a broken play, Bert. I think they wanted a screen set up and Richardson Look to turn to Simon. He wasn't even looking. Pressure was coming, and he dances out of the backfield, Bert. And uh, not only does he get back to the line of scrimmage, looks like he picked up yeah, a couple. Yeah, I mean, Richardson took, and I thought he was going to lose yardage, and he took and dodged a couple would-be tacklers and picked up positive yardage. Now they got third down. Let's say about six yards. What is definitely four down territory. In the third, it still remains Central Washington 20, Azusa Pacific 17. Here it's 47 to 7. All jacks. Trips right, three receivers. Lone receiver left. Passing, Richardson. Looking, looking, now dancing, rolling left. Gets a block. He's going to have some room to run, and he thinks about throwing it. Now he's going to take off. Funk giving chase. He gets away from him. He cuts underneath. Funk hits him, knocks him forward. So when it's all said and done, maybe a pickup of a yard. It's going to be about fourth and three here, Bert. Definitely going for it if you're Simon Frazier. Yeah, and Richardson scrambled all over the place. He must have ran about 40 yards there going back and forth, trying to find a receiver. Good job by the DBs for the Lumberjacks, covering everybody well downfield. Clock rolling at the 520 mark. And as Simon Frazier can't pick up the first down here, Burks, they might not see the ball again because the Lumberjacks will try to squeeze this game to a halt. Timeout? Yeah, timeout on the field. We're back in one minute on e Well, yeah, we're back in a minute. ESPN 92.7 FM. One word to describe competing for SFU is tradition. My word is success. Determination. Experience. Inspiring. One word to describe competing for SFU is excellence. It is family. Passion. My word is pride. Opportunity. My word is patriotic. I am Sophie Swan. I am Adam Jones. I am Peyton Smith. I am Justin Guerin. I am Victoria Saunders. I am Braden Charlton. I am Michaela Guerrero. I am Graham Miller. I am Christine Howlett. I am Adrian Vanderhelm. I am Michelle Waters, and we are proud to be on Canada's NCAA team. Harry Fox Field. It's fourth, we will call it four. Timeout was called. Obviously, very, well, it's not critical, but at this point, both teams want to impose their will on the other bird. Richardson, one back, one tight end. For that is 11 personnel. They're going to go to John again. No, he's going to run over the right side. He being Richardson, they try to get a little too cute. And Willie Mitchell breaks through the line of scrimmage, and he just sends Richardson to the carpet. Tackle for loss is the turn, Bert. First and 10 Lumberjacks, the result. Yeah, the timing did seem right on that play it, from the beginning of the snap and the fake there, but it didn't matter. Jacks get in for a loss, and they get to take over the ball, first and 10. Now will we see Sweeney or Wood? We will see plenty of running here as the Jacks. It is going to be Sweeney along with Isaiah Hall as the Jacks are going to try to end this game. Simon Fraser's out of timeout, so they can't stop the clock. Can the Jacks grind out some first downs and call it a day? Go 2-0, rather 3-0 in international play this year. 
Passing. Sweeney, tip ball, wants Austin. So the Jacks, with the backups in, Bert, they want to let them run the offense. Well, Sweeney, Joey Sweeney, he's six foot three, 225 pounds, redshirt freshman, is still growing. Yeah, he's the kid they really like, and they really like him. And felt going into camp that he would probably be the backup to Robert Weber, but Adam Wood just outplayed him in the uh, the camp. And so Sweeney, three on the depth chart, but obviously only a freshman, the future's bright. Sweeney, again from the pistol to his left hall. Three down lineman for the clan. Sweeney, low snap, he will pass. And he gets it out to Hall. Flags are down. It's going to be close to a first down. Big hit on the far side, delivering the blow turn. The flags are down, and I'm going to assume this is against Humble State. It's a false start. Yeah, this is an interesting call there. The official is moving his hands like a false start. So the play should have been killed, regardless. Turn and Dr. Will, or uh, Hall will remember that hit. So move the Jacks back five. Now four minutes, 43 seconds left in the ball game. Penalty is declined. Second down and 10. Oh, no, they no, accepted it. I could have swore I heard decline. Did you? Well, this is like a holding. Okay, two penalties on the play. So this adds up. So you had a holding as well. I want to thank people who are actually understand the game and are focusing because I was lost on that one, Bert. So, well, now I'm very confused because now they're going <laughs> back to the line of scrimmage. Okay, so look, Bert, there were flags down, and it's third and ten. That's, that's, those are the facts. That I can tell you. I'll go with that. I don't know what else happened. There were flags down. I heard it decline. So, and there were two flags. So they could have just declined both penalties. You don't want to give this team more opportunities. It would have been second and 20 had they accepted the penalty. Jameer Austin with his gold shoes lined up near side. Motion up top from Garrigan. Play action. Sweeney rolls right. Looking, 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 and going to get dragged out. Getting the sack, big number 50, Brad Lyons, the six foot four junior. Well, Sweeney was trying to find one of his men. He had two men down the sidelines, one short, one deep, but he just couldn't get that pass off before he got tackled. So good job there by Simon Frazier declining the penalty. So the Lumberjacks will be forced to punt. And Elderman will come back out. He's kicked twice and he's had two beauties so far. And he can let this one rip. He's Lowry plenty back rip. deep. Elterman. Stands at about the 19. Around the 15 is Lowry. Three personal protectors. Got to give the special teams credit. Another good day for them. And Elterman takes his time with no rush. And he should have just let it rip because it's a pretty poor kick. Elterman is not going to be happy. That one almost in the stands off the side of his foot. Uh, very reminiscent of a shanked sandwich by the Hall of Famer Burt Nordstrom. Net about 10 yards on the punt, Bert. Oh, I tell you, at least my uh, shank goes 15 yards. <laughs> touche, touche. So the HSUD will have to come back out and for Miles Richardson and company, Bert, they've got a chance, again, with plenty of time to get double digits on the board. Now, if I remember correctly, when Simon Fraser was down on Arcadia, they did score 14 on the defense in that game. That is correct. So that I'm, is correct. I'm sure that uh, Richardson would like to get in the end zone again here before this one ends. Don't forget next week, the Lumberjacks non-league play at Western State, Colorado. Some tells me the weather will not be as good as it is today. And we'll be at about 7,000 feet. A little screen set up here to Burren. And he is quickly dropped after a pickup of four, maybe five. Clock will continue to roll with 3.15 to go. The official uh, emphatic about that. <laughs> Official's getting hungry too, JB. Jax. Wait for Simon Frazier to break the huddle. And uh, with 3.03 to go here, running out of time. Under three now to play, clock still winding. Second and five officially. Two receivers right, two receivers left. Richardson will pass, pocket looking. Throws, has a receiver and it's dropped. Had Gavin Cobb, he heard the footsteps and put the biscuit in the dirt, which is carpet here. And it is now third and five. Yeah, hit him with the back shoulder. Very catchable pass, but he was thinking about the run. Well, it's a good old fashioned football rule, Bert. If you get two hands on the ball, you gotta catch it. That's just the deal. I think we've talked about that before. We've covered it before. 
we've seen our, uh, not only have we seen our fair share of drops, but between the two of us, we've dropped our fair <laughs> share too. 2.42 to go here, third and five. And it's gonna be a pass for Richardson. Gets pressure from Willie Mitchell, then he throws over the middle, has a receiver, the catch is made by John. John takes a big hit, but he holds on. Julier there on the stop, helping him out. 22, Khalil Ely. So Ely, along with Julier. First and 10, Burt getting closer to the red zone. This drive now first and 10 at the Humboldt State 27. Clock moves with 2.20 to go. The clock may play a role in this as well. And not a lot of uh, urgency. sense of urgency no. from Simon Fraser here. Methodically breaking the huddle. Clock still moving. Motion from John comes to the slot on the far side. They're going to look that direction. They're going to throw that direction. A little in route. Pitch and catch. Julia makes the stop. Cobb makes the catch. I'm going to call it a six yard gain. Clock winding. Second down. Simon Fraser still taking a full huddle. No timeouts. They got to hustle. Clock will catch up with them if they continue to move at this pace. Still in the huddle. And they break the huddle with 18 to go on the play clock. John all alone to the right. Byrne Cobb to the left. It's a strong trips look with the tight end in the H-back spot. Motion from Byrne. Passing. Richardson steps up and he's going down. Nate Ostrom swallows him up and he's going to get dropped. That is huge. You move him back and the clock continues to roll. It is going to be third and a ton. Buck 10 to go. 47 to 7. Lumberjacks trying to keep single digits on the board for Simon Frazier. Simon Frazier at this point looks content. Third and 13. Ball is at the Lumberjack 30. I guess they're just going to take two more plays in this game. Under a minute to play. Quads formation. Richardson snap, passing. Pocket, and he gets it off to Simon. It's going to be a screen up the middle, and he's going to pick up the first down, Burt. So the drive stays alive. The clock will stop momentarily inside the red zone with 39 seconds to play. Well, Ryan Shell makes the stop. Clock moving and no huddle finally for Simon Frazier. Directing traffic, Richardson. 30 seconds to go, first to 10. Ball at the 14-yard line in Humboldt State Territory. Clock still rolling. Richardson passing. Throws over the middle, and it is dipped. Intercepted. Here come the Lumberjacks. It's Ely. Ely on the sideline is eventually going to get shoved out of bounds. So the Lumberjacks will hold their water. That ball was tipped by John and in the back of the end zone. Khalil in the right spot at the right time, gifted an INT. Jacks are going to hold on to win today 47-7. Yep. to That will do it. Well, JB, as I, as I look at the future up here and stuff, I think they've got a lot of nucleus for young players to build off of. If they can take and develop some better line play and stuff, I think they've got a good quarterback, get a couple more skill guys yeah, really in there. Like, they really can do like, some stuff here. I like Richardson. By the quarterbacking in the GNAC this year oh. is just unbelievable. Between Robbie Football, who I don't think gets enough credit, uh, Riley Hennessy, uh, Andrew Elfers, Richardson. I mean, it's just littered. Then I didn't mention Duckworth and Fanumiai oh. down there at Western Oregon. Yeah, you got to like Duckworth. He's and guess good. what, folks? Jax, W, they win today. It's a final 47 to 40 after a 40 to nothing lead at the half. They cruise in this one, and they improve to 7 and 1 on the road again next week. We're going to pause, take a two minute timeout. We'll bring you stats. Plus, head football coach Rob Smith will join us in the postgame show on ESPN 92.7 FM. <laughs> 